Ah, uh, my favorite word in the English dictionary is the D word, and that, of course, what? is dynasty. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, there is a dynasty brewing in New Jersey, uh, the capital of America. What? And I'll explain to you why that is in just one second. Good morning to you. That's Cody Decker right there. That Super Bowl champion, Mr. Paxico Burris. And, of course, the NBA Hall of Famer, my main man, Timmy Hardaway Sr. Legends. And you are whoever you are. Let's get you started with a little something we like to call Friday morning headlines. Well, that's right. We like the word dynasty, don't we, boys? We use it probably too often, Plax. But there's a dynasty brewing with the New York Jets because about an hour and a half ago, Aaron Rodgers, before day two of training camp, spoke to a radio station in New York and came out and said, this ain't a one-trick pony, baby. This is, I think I can play a number of years. The Jets gave up a lot for me, so to play just one year would be a disservice to Craigie. But if that turns out to be a magical year, who knows? Meaning if and when the Jets win the Super Bowl this year, that might be a good time to wrap up a career. But he's verbally committing to the concept of a one, two, three Pete dynasty, three Super Bowls, three years. It's a Jets world, and you're all just living in it, boys. Can I, I want to ask you one You ask question. me anything you want. What, I'm in a great what, what mood today. What consists of a dynasty? A dynasty, uh, it's a significant amount of winning in a certain period of time. Okay. Okay. Now, have they done that? No, they have not. Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Plex. Right. Let me go ahead. You know what? My favorite D word in yes. that one liner right there is not dynasty. It wasn't. It is the last word in the sentence. It is disservice. Disservice. Yes. yes. That's not a dynasty. That is one word that the New York Jets have never been able to use because they only have one world championship. That is correct. When and you, it predates you, all hey, of them. Well, not Timmy, but the one, rest of us. Then two, you can call the Kansas City Chiefs. They are coming up upon a dynasty. I believe they but are. never the New York Jets. However, right. if the however, New, however, 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 Aaron Rodgers is in great shape. He's in a great mental space as not well. Dynasty. Yes, sir. You're, You're having your one, one yet. I know that. Yeah, in the last, what, whatever year? 54 years. 54 yeah. years. 54 one, years. One yet. So how are you going to call this a dynasty? It, he, he, he's saying, yeah. look, right. like, like Plaque said, Mm -hmm. A disservice. Disservice. He doesn't play. Deliver is a yeah. disservice. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that deliver next, it, these, play. These, these two Listen, years. Listen, they're not raining on my parade today. Really? Here's the reality. I think you are. Every dynasty <laughs> has to start somewhere, right? You don't just wake up and have a dynasty. There's a beginning point to the dynasty. And then, as we all know, there's an end point of the dynasty. Today... My fellow Americans is the beginning point oh, no. of the New York Jet dynasty. One, two, look, look, even Zach Wilson looks like he's an athlete right there. <laughs> you don't even believe that. Yeah. You do not believe I that. I do. Word. And I'll tell you something else. I look at Sir Fran Rogers because it looks like he's got a stalker. Everywhere he goes, I see number two. Right there he is again. No matter where Aaron Rodgers goes, number two is there like a puppy dog. Like a little puppy dog. Anyway, you're not going to talk <laughs> me off the, off the mountain Listen, today really? because it's a Jet dynasty starting today. Uh -huh. So tell Nick Wright, the Chiefs fan, sorry, not sorry, your run is over. It's not. They have a, they have a Super Bowl caliber team. Bingo. Roster. Thank but you. But that does not mean that they're going to get to the Super Bowl and win it. I, I agree. It's very hard to do right. that. But when Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback – and you've got Robert Sala, my new best friend, as your head coach. Oh, my God. And you've got a great defense. And you have Elijah Vera Tucker back at right guard, healthy, who is on his way to a Pro Bowl-type season, which you will acknowledge. The New York Jets are now the <laughs> team to beat. Uh, and everyone else is vying for second place. Uh, he's coming back again. Hasn't thrown a single pass. And he's already coming back again for year two and year three. I would, yes! say, I would say this. They will be better in the second year than the first year. I will bet that. Well, whatever. That makes it easier to win a second Super Bowl, Black. He, he it. says in the quote, if they do win a championship, and you just said he might just yeah. hang them up at one. Wow. You see that little dance yeah, right there? Yeah. That's my Super Bowl dance oh, right yeah. there. Uh, I might even go to the parade, and I hate parades. <laughs> Anyhow. Lots of Jets uh, talk throughout the day because Aaron Rodgers did acknowledge he's coming back for, he may say, for a whole decade. Who knows? <laughs> Here, that would be a dynasty, right? No, Ten no. straight Super Bowls. They'd be like Bill Russell. He'll be, he'll, he'll be 63 years old. There you go. <laughs>
<laughs> You're funny. Look at that handsome fellow right there. Uh, here's headline number two. Lamar Jackson. Uh, two months ago, this was in doubt. But obviously, when you get the contract signed and locked and loaded, uh, you show up for training camp on time. And in this early. case, early. A week, a week early. Because the Ravens training camp does not open until the 25th, which is, what, like next Wednesday or something. So that shows you leadership. That tells you that the check cleared, and that tells you that <laughs> Lamar Jackson is in a good hey, space. Hey, $185 million guarantee me of making you some different things. Exactly. <laughs> and making his life in order real yeah, quick. That means yeah. feels great. Yeah. And I know he's excited because we've talked about a lot of plaques in the show. Whether it's the rookie sensation, people are in love with Zay Flowers. Yeah. Whether it's having Odell Beckham Jr. on that team and the return of Bateman and Andrews, of course, they're great tight end. He's got plenty of weapons to throw the ball to. Yeah, he got, he's got plenty of weapons, but he needs to do, deliver the ball accurately and get the football to OBJ and yep. uh, uh, Devin and Zay Flowers. I, I still haven't seen him play yet, so it'll be interesting to to, 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 to see what he brings to the offense. Sure. And remember, he hasn't played football in a while because he missed the last uh, month yeah. plus of the season with the injury last year to his knee. But just good to see that guy out there. He's one of those guys that's appointment TV. Lamar Jackson's on TV. You stop and watch. And there's not enough of those guys. So that's, good to see him there. I just want to say that's important for him to be four days early yeah. to, to, to um, practice or just, just, be there. There. just be there. I think that's important not only to him, but to his organization, to his coaches, to get ready for for. for That's training a good camp. point because don't forget, Todd Munkin is a new offensive yeah. coordinator. He's an older man, brand new yeah. but it's a brand new offense. Mm-hmm. So the more you can right. get out of the field and just walk through it, only benefits them long term. Yes. I mean, listen, my first five years in Pittsburgh, I went through three offensive coordinators in five years. Wow. I, I had Kevin Gilbride, then I went to uh, Mike Malarkey, then I had Ken Winsorhunt, and it, and it's different. And, and I had four starting quarterbacks in five, in, five, in five years. So the more that you can gather rapport with the offensive coordinator and, and, and the quarterback quick, uh, they'll be ready to play. People always say the Gilbride offense was way too complicated. I loved it. Did you really? I loved it. Huh. It, it helped take my game to another level because you weren't just locked into one play. Because every time we got to the line of scrimmage, there was like four or five different uh, routes that I could so run. So it was complicated. Based off of the coverage. Um, gotcha. The, the wide receiver and the quarterback had to be, be on the same page and see the defense on the run. And, and, did, and then we would throw the football. Got it. Cause so it was so more it, complex. It, it, it Maybe made, not complicated. Yeah, oh, yeah. It made it hard to cover because there, there were so many options. There. Gotcha. Uh, here's uh, headline number three. Uh, people are rejoicing like uh, Satan was killed yesterday, but uh, the NFL owners unanimously voted uh, for Dan Snyder to sell the Washington Commandos to uh, Josh Harris and his group. Uh, great. Okay. Good the for you. The, the, huh? the, the, the Commandos? The, command, the, the Commandeers, the Commandos, the, I don't know what the hell you call them. They're going to have a new name next year anyway. Uh, we've, pr- we've sound on this? Who's talking? Josh Harris? Here's the new owner of the Commanders. He's not talking. Uh, Can I play it? Let's see what he has to say. We'll have more to say in the days that come, but today I want to leave it here to our team and the incredible fan base in Washington. A new era of Washington football is here. It's time to get to work. Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay, oh, awesome. Uh, he said that in Philadelphia 10 years ago. They've never been to an Eastern Conference and final. And you know who felt that more than anybody? Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera, that's there's right. Ron Rivera's on. There's he a gets new, a free pass this year, yeah, but there's a new culture brewing down in No, BC. no, I don't, yeah. I don't think there's going to be a free pass. I think that he has to do, do his job and he has to do it right. But, I mean, with the team that he has, it, you know, it's not going to help. But I think when you go in there and you go do your job each and every day and it showed that the owner that you care yeah. about your job, you care about what you're trying to do, you care about winning, you know, and losing and hurt you. I think that he will turn his head to own his head and he might stay here, but I don't think that this is a, you know, a free year for him. I mean, the biggest story here is not just that Dan Snyder's out. Uh, the world seems happy about it. You know who the happiest person in America today is? That Dan Snyder sold the team to Josh Harris? Is that? It's Dan Snyder. He bought the team for $900 million. He sold the team for $6 billion. Mm -hmm. So while everyone's having a party and celebrating, he's having the biggest party because he's the guy that got paid. NFL slapped him on the back of the head on the way out of the door and give me $60 million in fine. Yeah, Yeah. like, hey, you just made $6 billion. We'll take $60 million and get out. We never want to see you again. Uh, Magic Johnson is a uh, very small kind of vanity uh, part of the ownership group uh, Mm -hmm. with Josh Harrison. He did say yesterday that we are changing the name of the team. 
Uh, now, there's certain protocol. Take that off the screen. It's far too many he words said, to We read. are changing the name. Uh, we're changing the name of the team. Uh, you need There's NFL protocol to do that, blah, right. blah, blah. Right. Uh, but this will be the last year. They're known okay. as the Commandos. So, so. So, what does the, so what do the fans do with the, with the New Jerseys that they just purchased? I think you burn them. Is that what you do? <laughs> I mean, that, that, or does the Fanatics already... have like a Jersey exchange program no, or something? No, you got to ask Mike Rupert about it. Or don't no, you, no, you no, send no. them to like a third world nation uh, so we can get some jerseys? You can, just, you can just send them off or burn yeah, them. You know, there is a, there is a, there is yeah, a village in some country we never heard of that uh, the kids run around in T-shirts that say, like, New England Patriots, 19-0, and yeah. and things like that. Yeah, we know. You aware of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> so, so all these, I guess all these towns in <laughs> Africa in these villages, they think that the New England Patriots yes, they do. Uh, were, were the two, 2007 Super Bowl. That's, That's exactly yeah. right. And they were not. They were not because you caught a ball at the end of the game. Here's a very quick to your fourth headline. Uh, Lionel Messi's playing soccer tonight yep. for uh, yep. the Inter Miami Club. Yes. Okay, great. Let's move on. I got a, I got a game at 9 o'clock I got to watch. It's called USA Women's. That's I'm right. I'm worried about Lionel Messi exactly. playing soccer exactly. in South Beach. Sorry, I'm not sorry. The same thing. Yes. And I'll give you one more. I'm fine. Uh, you know, baseball's done a great job making baseball more entertaining. Mm-hmm. And coming up a little bit later in the show, we're going to show you one opportunity a fan had to really steal the show from the Atlanta Braves. And unfortunately, he was unable to do that. But we can't show it to you yet because it's really secretive. And we're going to give it to you a little bit later on in the show when you're prepared and you've had your morning coffee. Coming up after this, Justin Fields said something that is so dumb. I literally spit my coffee out. And I don't even drink coffee. He said he's going to throw for more than 4,000 yards. <laughs> yeah, I saw I that too. It. We'll, we'll walk you through it after this. Mm-hmm. Tell the guy. Greetings, soccer fans. Are you ready for the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup? Because we are. That's right. Australia and New Zealand, look out. State of the Union is coming. Off the post and in. And we'll be going above and beyond down under. We'll have new podcast episodes every single match day. So follow Alexi Lawless's State of the Union on the Fox app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. So there's Justin Fields, mm-hmm. as Tim says, the running back quarterback yes. for the Chicago Bears. <laughs> so in the last two years, he has sort of combined 4,112 yards. Mm-hmm. Combined, combined over two seasons, Tim Hardaway. Came out yesterday and said, I plan on doing it this year alone. Here's Justin Fields. Listen to what he said. Mm-hmm. The Bears have been around for 100 years, they've never had a quarterback to throw for 4,000 yards. Yeah. We believe you're going to be in Chicago for a long, long time. <laughs> will you break that record? I will. Ah, I plan I, on doing it this year, too. Woo! Plan on doing it this year. Plan on doing Ooh, it can, this can year. Go ahead. He didn't even look confident by saying <laughs> that he was going to throw for 4,000. He, he was like, he was like, he kept moving around, shifting, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your quarterback. It was almost no, like the no, reporter. That is not my that's quarterback. What do you yeah. mean? No, no. You're a Chicago I'm, Bears yes, fan. Yes, yes. How can that not be your quarterback? I'm upset that, that, that I got a root for him on the Chicago Bears. Well, come on, Because man. he's a running quarterback. He he, no but choice. he plays quarterback for the franchise. He's a running quarterback. What does that mean? Throw the ball. Who do you want, Jim McMahon? Yeah, yeah, because I know he's tougher. <laughs> I know he's going to throw the ball. Wow. I know we got a chance to win in the championship, uh-huh. which we did. Now, here's the good news. For those of you that are Justin Fields haters out there. I'm not a <laughs> hater. I'm not a hater. <laughs> here's the thing you want to see, I'm though. just not believing in it. Plax can speak to this. He improved across the board year one to year two the way you want a quarterback to improve. Now, let's also be fair to your running quarterback, mm-hmm. okay? He's running for his life. He didn't have anybody to throw the ball to and last he's year. He's running for his life. So, uh, line he did what he had to do, I think, to survive, let alone to try to play competent football. This year, the expectation should be those numbers increase exponentially because they overhauled the entire roster and he has some legitimate weapons to at least attempt to throw the ball to now. I mean, we haven't got to this segment yet, but that is Fugazi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank you. I, listen, thank you. I, I, I believe he can get to 4,000 yards, but I believe he will throw for 3,000 and rush for 1,000. So you think combined? That, 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 is, that is the only way he will get to 4,000 yards as a quarterback, as the quarterback of the Bears. And, and, but also, the weather won't allow you for, to From throw 4,000 yards 
right. Chicago. <laughs> I will also say this. You know, the headline of the story is that Justin Fields says he will throw 4,000 yards this year. To be fair, if you just watched that interview he did, um, that guy asked it's really the reporter right, exactly. setting him up like, exactly. hey, exactly. no one else has ever done it before. Right. Do you think you can do it? He should have been like, honest what's he and supposed said, to say? He no? should said, yeah, yeah, he, should, he, he, said, he should have been honest and said, I'm going to try. But, yeah. you know, we'll see uh, not just. Uh, or here's a better answer. I'm more concerned with winning and losing. Exactly. Yeah. If we exactly. win yeah. and exactly. I throw for 100 yards, I'm going to be a happy dude. Exactly. Day. Don't the, be the, like, yeah, I'm going to do And I'm going to do it this year. There's a no, reason why. There's a reason why no quarterback has thrown for 4,000 yards. And you think it's the weather it's and the, the weather. elements, it's yeah? It's the elements. Uh, here's another uh, story that's brewing out there. Apparently, C.J. Gardner-Johnson and I uh, come from the same, uh, the same bloodline, Cody Decker. Oh, really? Uh, he's a former Eagles, now with the Detroit Lions. And uh, he said, and I quote now, or do you guys have sound of this? Let him say it in his own words, Cody, because I don't want to get fired. Here's C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Go ahead. My least favorite thing is the people. It's obnoxious. I can't stand it. Now, he's playing uh, video games while being interviewed for like a podcast. GTA or something. Uh, yeah, Grand Theft is what he's playing. That's right. And let me just tell you exactly what he said, because it was hard to hear. Um, <laughs> I bleeping can't stand the bleeps uh, from Philadelphia, meaning mm -hmm. the Philadelphia fans. Uh -huh. When they won last year, everybody was in love with Philadelphia fans, remember? Oh, it's the best place to play. I can't believe I never got to play here before. The fans are so great. They blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. He don't feel that way. C.J. Gardner-Johnson kept it real. Those fans are animals in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? and they are fair weather fans. That's right. They be booing on the kickoff, and the game just starts. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Open, the kickoff, open the kickoff, they booing. Their own team. But you know, yeah. The ball didn't go far enough. <laughs> Anyhow, wow. great to see a former Eagle keeping it real now that he's in Detroit, or he's just so miserable that he's in Detroit, he's lashing out. That could also right. be the case, too, right? Uh, here's another quick little story for you as we get this Friday morning uh, rolling on. James Harden put something out yesterday, and none of us could figure out what the hell he's talking about. There it is. It's been comfortable for so long. It's time to get uncomfortable. Mm. Now, a lot of people are reading into that. I've got my thoughts on it. But, Plax, you go first. Yeah. Been comfortable for so long, time to get uncomfortable. Yeah. That means he's going to be in shape when the season starts. <laughs> really? So, so, that's the only reason. It's like, he's been comfortable. He's been comfortable. Going into camp overweight. Right. So, now he's working out and he's a little bit sore. So, he's more focused yeah, on the offseason. Yeah, he's more focused. So huh. he's, All right, Tim, you are the resident NBA guy. You're in the Hall of Fame. You have any idea what the heck he's talking about? Not one clue. <laughs> I have not one <laughs> iota of what he's talking about. Been comfortable, nice time. To move. I, don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, Just for the record, he wasn't comfortable when he was the star and the focus of the offense in Houston. He wasn't comfortable when he was in Brooklyn with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. He wasn't comfortable when he led the league in assists last year for the Philadelphia 76ers. But this year. He's going to be uncomfortable? Like, I, 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 I thought I maybe it meant he's shaving a beard. Oh. But I don't know that we're getting that. That's just a complicated dude who wants out of a city because he doesn't like staying in one place, I guess. Well, you, you Papa was about, a rolling stone. You're always talking about LeBron James, and we're talking about LeBron James, what he tweets, what he tweets. Yeah. We're talking about James Harden, what he tweets, because, you know, it's a, it's a big situation there in Philadelphia. And I, and I say this again. If he doesn't get what he wants, he's going to be disgruntled, and he's just going to be like a Ben Simmons. Like, I'm not going to play. I'm hurt. You, you know, think my he's going to pull that card? I yeah, think he's going card? to pull that card. I think he's going to play that card and, uh, and force his way out, like he always forces his way out. Can but, I ask you a stupid question? Mm -hmm. uh, even though my teacher once told me, Craig, there's no such thing as a stupid question except for the questions you ask. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that uh, trend going here if I may. There was the thought that before he left Houston and came to Brooklyn mm -hmm. that he was wearing a fat suit. And he wasn't really out of shape. He just wanted people to think he was out of shape. You talk to people in the NBA. Is there any truth at all to the fact that he might have been wearing a fat suit under his clothes? Um, probably. I, you know what? I, he's complicated, like you said. I, you know, James Harden is hard to read. And the stuff that he wears, you know. 
Uh, so you're saying he might have been wearing a fat he, he suit? Could, he what could the have hell been. What a fat suit? Well, I mean, that you know, suit that makes you look fat. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, they they have it on all the time at yeah. the movies. You know, people put that stuff on, and yeah. just I don't know, man. That's I, 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 I I'm just guessing. I, I, I really this that is tweet, a complicated. Yeah, dude. this tweet has me going. Uh, my head going in circles. I don't know what he's saying, but we will find out at training camp. And I and I hope you're right. I hope he's come. I hope he come in in shape. Uh, that and, would be and different. Ready to play. That would be different. Would I totally hope he come in like different. slim and ready to go. Now look, we got much more football coming up. We got Timmy's favorite Friday for real for Gazy coming up. But I, I teased in the last segment. I'm so glad we were able to find this video. It's very hard to come about if you haven't seen it yet. There's a thing called Mr. Freeze or yeah, the Freeze, the freeze. Uh, in Atlanta. And basically what it is is he's a really fast runner, like a track star kind of guy, but he's in like a full body condom, so you don't know who the guy is. Mm -hmm. And they'll bring a random fan out of the stands. <laughs> and if you can beat the Freeze in a race uh, in the outfield, you win some kind of fabulous prize, right? Yeah. It's very rare for the Freeze to lose. Well, this young kid had the Freeze beat until he didn't. Oh, God. I got, got you, it. Freeze. Got I got oh. Oh. No bounce across. Oh. Say, there he goes. Say, oh, look out. Oh. Face first. Oh. oh. You never oh. look back. Don't <laughs> ever look back. Can you show it again, please? Because at first uh. I'm figuring my man's at least going to bounce across <laughs> ahead of the freeze. <laughs> oh. oh. He stepped on something right oh. there. Oh. Yeah. His glasses go flying. And the best part is oh. the cameraman doesn't care if he's hurt or not. Oh, you, that was you some air time. Get the shot. Yeah. He had some real air time right there. <laughs> yes, he did. And he blew a tire. Now, if you guys yes, can uh, show one more time for me, and uh, not this when we look get at the to last, the next view. Look at the last three steps, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right there. Damn. Oh. I want you to, I want oh. you to freeze it, though, Neil, upstairs, the if you can. Uh, hold on one sec. When he goes horizontal and stop. Oh, yeah, we need that. Or don't stop. Stop. <laughs> stop there. Or don't stop when he's on the ground. Here oh, you there go. you go. Right oh. there. Oh. oh, that's so majestic backwards. There we go. Hold on. Oh, here we go. And I'm going to beat you, Freeze. Stop. Look, Bob, I'm super. Oh. <laughs> Yo, his friends are killing him right killing now. Killing us. It is We're rare to get the We're full. killing him. It is rare <laughs> to get the full horizontal. He just went viral. But look, he still got him on a yard. Bounce, buddy. Bounce. You can bounce. But he, 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 he did. He, 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 he did keep his chin off the ground. He though. did. Yeah. He did. He did not face plant. He did not face plant. He held so up. once again, the freeze is victorious. Yes, he is. He yeah, is. that guy is a meme. <laughs> Forever. For the rest of his life now. Yeah. Like, if that guy gets mad, you know full well what's going up uh, at oh yeah. the wedding, right? No question. Right? <laughs> the best man's like, I just want to show you guys a video of Billy before he met uh, Christina and got married. <laughs> Wow. And you got to invite the freeze to the wedding, I think. Absolutely, right? No, we do the don't, race. No, we don't. We don't. We don't need to invite the freeze because he gonna I be like, that. I want to race again. I think you have no. to. I don't know. By the way, I'm being told we do have breaking news. Oh. This is very interesting. Oh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh, okay. This just in: Aaron Rodgers is committed to the New York Jets, not just beyond year one, but beyond year two for a full three-year commitment. For the New York Jets, unless they win the Super Bowl this year, then all bets are off the table. He theoretically could call it a career, but he wanted Jet fans to know it would be a disservice to the franchise if I leave after one year. So I've got you for a couple, maybe even three. That, my friends, is what we call the beginning of a dynasty. That's right, I said it. No! Yes. He 100%. says if he wins, he might be shutting it down. That's the end of your by dynasty. The way, and by the way, I could live the rest of my life in peace. Okay. If the New York Jets win a Super Bowl, Plax knows what I'm talking about. No, and then he no, decided no, no, to no, retire. No, 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 no. You played for the Jets, you know what I'm talking about. You walk no. into that building, Aaron said it right. That one trophy's lonely. Yeah, I know. That trophy needs a partner. I, t I told you on countless occasions, when you walk into that building, yeah. you go through that door and you're like, man, something just doesn't feel right. I hope we can win today. <laughs>
Oh, that that is the feeling. When you walk through the door, you hope, the door, you hope so we can win today. I hope we can win today. That wow. feeling has changed since Aaron Rodgers I'm got just there. You, the aura in the building. Yes. Well, well, to be fair, you played feeling. for a difficult era of Jet football. Uh, 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 well, no, he played for a difficult <laughs> era. He went there after the back-to-back -back championship games, uh, okay. thinking, okay, they went to back-to-back -back AFC championship games. I'm joining a team that's primed right. and ready to win, right? Okay, so there's a possibility yeah. that he may retire if they won a Super Bowl in his first year. Bingo. So that tells me he'll be back for year two because they will not win a Super Bowl in year one. We're going to have counsel, you and I. We're no, going to sit no. down on a couch I, I, together, I'm, I'm not and we're going to get it out. <laughs> I'm not You're going to get it out. Nope. I'm not the only guy that thinks they're winning the Super Bowl. Uh, sophomore wide receiver Mr. Garrett Wilson said, let's just cut all the nonsense out and say yeah. it the way it is. Yeah. We're good enough to win a Super Bowl. Here's Darren Wilson. Listen to this. I ain't messing around. I'm not going to beat around the bush, man. We want to win a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, you don't make moves in the offseason like we did unless you're trying to get there. You know, that's that's the mindset. And, and like I love that. That's a that's a kid who seems mature, veteran guy, only going into year number two. But, you know, it used to be, you're right, Plax, I can't deny it, not that you'd hope that you could maybe find a win somewhere when you walked in the front door, but the word super and bowl were not allowed inside that building because you were so, you were <laughs> wow. so far away from it. Wow. You couldn't even say it, right? Can't even you'd say be it. mocked. You'd be laughed. They'd take you out in a net and put a straitjacket on you. But now the word super bowl are on every wall inside that building. I'll and Aaron Rodgers is committed to being a Jet for multiple years. It is a Jet dynasty that's beginning is, right now. Is. Folks, not, it is not. And here's what's funny about it. Dynasty. Five years from now, we're going to all get together at a barbecue at Cody's place. Yes. And we're going to be like, remember when the Jet Dynasty started? And you're going to say, I do remember it. I was working with you on TV, and I remember the Jets were playing in the Hall of Fame game. And now look at us. Hey, I hope he feels that way. Every, team, every, every player on that team and, and every player league-wide should feel that, that they have a chance to yes. win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody makes moves in the offseason to improve and to get to the Super Bowl and, and, and to be better than they were last year. That's league-wide. But uh, as far as them getting to the Super Bowl in year one, mm -hmm. Everybody has them handpicked to win it, and it's it's not that easy to just. I didn't say it's just, easy. I just said it's happening. To, to, I didn't to say speak those easy. words. Speak those words. Hold We're on. gonna have some you tough said, games. We have some tough games. You said it's uh, going to happen, but you said it's not. It gonna ain't be gonna be easy, easy but it's gonna six. happen. We have a couple so. games where we only win by ten. That's gonna oh, happen really? this year. Yeah. That one. And here's the beauty of it. When you send out the invitations for your 60th and the three of us get those invitations, we will celebrate their fourth Super Bowl in five years with you at your 60th birthday party. And I'm coming in jet green, buddy. I'll tell you that you know right, what? right now. You know what? You're a Knicks fan. You are delusional. I am yes. a Knicks fan. That's you right. You are delusional. I didn't say we're winning an NBA championship this year, but have you seen? I'm talking about the Jets. Have you seen Dante DiVincenzo? What's up? Oh, my God. Splash. That's happening. <laughs> and we may go out there and get a couple more Villanova players. I hear Kyle Lowry wants out. Yeah, I, I know you don't drink coffee, but you need to lay off the coffee. There you go. Listen, we got a lot much more to do today. It is a Friday. It's a fun Friday. It's a real and forgazy Friday. It's a first in football Friday. And the Jets dynasty has just begun. Much more on that later in the show right here on FS1. Hey college football fans, Joel Klatt here, and I am so happy to announce my new interview series, The Joel Klatt Show Big Noon Conversations. Every Monday, we will bring you a candid conversation with the most influential voices in college football. From Colorado's Coach Prime to Coach Saban down in Tuscaloosa, we sit down and discuss all things college football. Download The Joel Klatt Show Big Noon Conversations wherever you get your podcasts, and subscribe to the new Joel Klatt Show YouTube channel. That's Tim Hardaway. That's Plaxico Burns. That's Cody Decker. That's the USA women's soccer jersey yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah, it is. And they play tonight at 9 o'clock. Uh -huh. They Pump play up. tonight. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You may have heard the New York Jets dynasty just started. More on that later, but uh, Timmy and Plax are here for a little stuff that we like to call for real or for like gazy. Gazy. So just random sports thoughts and comments, and the guys say if they're for real or for gazy. Start off in Washington. Uh, they're going to rename the team, apparently, according to Magic Johnson, who's a minority owner of the uh, new uh, group. And uh, the new name, we all agree, should be the Washington Pigskins. For real 
or for Daisy. For real, I think they should be the Pigskins, and I think that they get away from the Commanders. I never liked the Commanders at all, but I mean, but that's what we had to go with. And right. There we go, right there. But we don't, we don't need the mean mascot. We need that mascot. You like the happy uh, Major yeah. Tutty? That's what you like, right? Because because you, you want you want you want you you want the that's kids no to take the man. take up. <laughs> you want kids to take pictures. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he got the chip though. <laughs> he got the girl. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, for real, for Gazy there, Plax, you like pig skins? I gotta go for Gazy. I, I don't like pig skins, and that is not a pig. That is a wild <laughs> boar. That yeah. is not a pig. Um, I, I just can't see a professional team in the NFL <laughs> being <laughs> called the pig skin. How great would that be? That's not great. <laughs> no, not great at all. No, I like it. <laughs> Matter of fact, hey, Kate, can you make me some hoodies with the badass wild boar on it, please? Thank you. <laughs> uh, here's another one for you. Football is the last sport that North Americans will continue to dominate. We don't dominate hockey. We don't dominate basketball anymore. Yo, know, one of the best players is a European. A lot of the top players are European or Canadian, right? And uh, in baseball, the best player is Japanese. That's true. So football is the last bastion of American male greatness. For real or for gays? For real. Ooh. It's for real. I mean, let's just be downright honest about it. I mean, football is uh, America's game, and, and we have a bunch of um, Americans that's playing yep. football. Yeah, and we're <laughs> simple as that. I mean, no. I mean, yeah. That's the best insight we've ever had on yeah, this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like you said, but like you said, like yeah. but like you said, we knew. I'm gonna tell you this. Go we knew in basketball that they was coming. Right. Baseball, they always been there. You know, for the last 20, 30 years, they they Latin been American coming. players, mm-hmm. yes. or just players born in Cuba, right? Or exactly. Dominican. Yeah, but of basketball, Andrea. we knew that they was coming. We just didn't know how fa- they was come coming this quickly. Yeah. How about you, Plash? Oh like? man, I gotta say, for, I gotta say for real because football is the only sport that's played in North America. I always wonder what it would be like for an a American All Pro team to play against China. <laughs> we probably win. Nobody plays football, <laughs> but except in North America. Gotcha. All right. So, so there it, it, has to, it has to be for real. All uh, right. There you go. Let me go to the next one here. Uh, it was said by a commentator on TV yesterday, something that was outlandish, so I want to give you guys a shot to say if it's for real or for gazy. Phoenix Suns Bull Bull is currently more talented than Victor Wambayama. I said real? that. <laughs> for real, oh, you said I said that. Right. I said that, and, I, and that's for real. Yeah? If you if you look at Bo Bo's uh, athleticism and you look at his whole uh, uh, how he plays right now, right now he's better than Victor. Right now, right now. What right years now. are you? Almost been in the league a couple of years. Yeah, he's been in the league a couple of years. Well, I got to say Fugazi okay. because if he was as good as Victor Wambiamba, then he would have been the first pick. And he will he will be able to do things like this, and that he Bo can do Bo that. He can do, Bo Bo can do that. He's you you, you He's don't watch no you don't watch Wamba basketball. Yamba. I do right. watch basketball. Well, well, I'm, gonna t- I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Wamba, uh, Victor is not Bo Bo. What you Bo mean? Bo can play this better. This man than is supposed to man. be the next. Supposed to be. Of, supposed of to be. Jesus Shuttleworth. So, right. Supposed to be. And it's not gonna happen. And I'm sorry. And I and you know what? Y'all think this is going to happen? That man is going to be an all right basketball player. I'm He's going to be better than all right. Okay, we will see. He's going to be better than Bobo. Okay, okay, he will we'll, have a better career we, than Bobo. We will see. All right, we'll Bobo's see. in year four of the NBA. Right. Obviously, Victor Wabamama is about to start. It's going it's it's to take him year four, four nope. to get to. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I give him two years. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. I give him two years. Okay. To be fair, Tim's the guy that originally said that Bobo was better than Victor Wabamama. Yeah. No. So, of course, you said for real here today. Yes, I said for real. That, that's right. Now, he was also Thank a scout you. six months ago. Thank you. Right? Mm-hmm. I, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done with the conversation. You can say what you want to say. I know about these things. I've never seen And when it comes it. true, yeah. he going to be like, well, you know, he, he not going to say it on TV. I'm like, yeah, nope. We're going to invite him back. Yeah, yeah. He, no, he, 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 he was right. He was yeah, right. whisper. Yeah, hey, by the way, you were right. right. I don't right. Say we'll we'll right. find out. Right. Yeah. I haven't seen that man in months. Oh, I, don't, I don't watch basketball. Okay, you watch basketball, but yeah. you're really a football guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me give you another one here. Uh, it turns out that the Tampa Bay Rays were cheating all along. 
If you go back 65 games, a New York radio host, me and my partner, <laughs> said on the radio that there's something fishy in Tampa. If you look at these guys on the roster, they ain't that good. Yeah, they are. 28-7 and seven after their first 35. We went on the radio and said, there's something for Gazy going on there. No. They're under 500 since, One and they're game. no longer in first place. So, the Tampa Bay Rays clearly were cheating all along. For real or for Gazy? Fugazi! Oh, Craig, are you crazy? On. They're one game under 500 in the last 65. They're one of the best home run hitting teams in baseball. Yeah. Uh, this last few weeks, they've played the Rangers first place, yeah. the Braves first place, yeah. the Phillies wild card team, the D backs wild card team. They have the hardest schedule in baseball right now. And by the way, they're out of first place by not even a half game. They were 28 games over 500 after 35. Uh -huh. They've now played 65 more games, and they played those games under 500. 500. There was some fishy going on. They are 21 games over 500 right now. Because they cheated the first month. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, no, that's no. for real. This is a no. team that's been in the playoffs every year. I got to say, Fugazi. Nah, you're I, a football hey, player. No, I said <laughs> <laughs> You don't watch baseball. <laughs> I said I said yesterday the Tampa Bay Rays were one of the top five teams that, that could possibly still win the world Absolutely. win the World Series. Yes. So I gotta say Fugazi. All right, all Fugazi. Right. <laughs> Fugazi. <laughs> they want to the partnership. We cool, we cool. I'm just saying that's Fugazi. All right, here we go. Uh Dalvin Cook is still a man without a team. And it seems like it's the same three teams that uh, we keep referencing. You know, the Jets, the Dolphins, maybe the, the Patriots. I even heard the Bills. We heard that a couple weeks ago. Uh, but he should say Sign if he wants to win a Super Bowl with the New York Jets now that you have a three-year commitment from Aaron Rodgers. For real or for Gazy? If he wants to win a championship right now, if it's this year or next year, I'm saying for real he yes. should come to the Jets and win a championship with the Jets because they need him for the play-action pass and, and, and his value is will with the Jets right now yep. to win a championship is for real. Go ahead, Plax. I see where you're going. I got to say Gazy. Okay, why? Because we just had this conversation yesterday yep. and agreed that Dalvin Cook was a better fit in Miami. Well, I said he'd be a very offense. good fit in Miami. No, you said, you <laughs> said the, the best fit for Dalvin Cook yesterday was playing with he the did Miami Dolphins. Didn't he say he that? He said exactly that. Fair. He did hey, say I that. I know you said it because he I was here when you said it. If I may. That was 24 hours before a new Allen Can Rogers. we please pull the tape of him yeah. saying that Dalvin Cook is a better fit in Miami Dolphins? I Dolphin think he's a Jets. scary fit. If he goes to Miami, right. the Jets have some problems. So do the Buffalo Bills. Uh, but now Allen Rodgers is fully committed to two or three years here. The Jets become the Can better option. Can we please stop with a fully committed? Fully committed, unless they win a Super Bowl. Oh, and I don't care anyway after that. I'm good. I mean, I haven't watched football again if they win the Super Bowl this year. But you guys think Dalvin's better than Miami? It's fine. I figured as much. Okay. I, no, no. I didn't say that. Talk to me. Talk I say it for me. real. That's my guy right there. We're back on the same page. <laughs> All right. This one's more for you uh, than it is for Plax, uh, Timmy. Are you ready? Uh, Plax to go, Boris is the best <laughs> wide receiver we ever, we've ever had on this show. And I should let you know, we've had Victor Cruz on the show. Mm -hmm. We've had James Jones on the show. Right. We've had Greg Jennings on the show. Mm -hmm. We've had former giant Amani Toomer on the show. Oh. Those are the five wide receivers. I think that's it thus Ooh. far in the first 10 months of this show. Is he the best? For real? Or for Gazy? For real. Look at that. Yeah. For real. Yeah. 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 But you don't watch basketball. I don't watch basketball. Flax, I have to ask you the same question. Are you the best wide receiver we've ever had on the show? Is, those guys up there are phenomenal talents. Yes. Victor, uh, obviously, Imani. I, 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 I was fortunate enough to win a world championship with yep. him. But uh, the best out of those five, yeah. I got to say no, number 17. Number 17. Ooh. I say number 17. Number, not number 80, number 17. Number 17. That's exactly right. All right, DeAndre Hopkins made a mistake by signing with the Tennessee Titans when there are other teams that would have brought him in for less money but give him a better chance to win a Super Bowl. For real or for Gazy? For Gazy, go get that money. Forget <laughs> all right. that. Get that money. He did the right thing for him and his family. You never know if you're going to win a championship. You, you did the right thing. I'm happy for him. Congratulations. There you go. Tim doesn't know football. <laughs> I, but, 
<laughs> but I do know money. You got your best but, I, but I do know money. We talk, I'm talking about money. Why are you I'm talking about money. Why are you I'm talking about money. I'm not talking about football. I'm talking right. about money. I understand that. Okay. You are you are speaking. So you rather you take the speaking, championship than money? Absolutely. Okay. Got you. You are speaking from a financial position. Get that paper. When we're talking about DeAndre Hopkins making a mistake joining the Tennessee Titans, we we're talking about being in the best position to win a championship. And he he did, he did not get that paper. Uh, get any closer to winning a championship than with joining the Tennessee Titans. He don't want so to win a championship. Say, he's like gazes? he's like he, everybody he, wants to like win a championship. He's like James Harden. He wants the money. No, everybody <laughs> wants to win a championship. <laughs> you can't tell James Harden that. <laughs> but that's basketball. <laughs> right, and, and apparently that's football <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, I got one more for you. Uh, this one's more for you, Plox. You can go first here, okay? Uh, for real or for gaze? That's the game we're playing. Uh, Chris Mullen was the best player from that run TMC squad. For real or for gaze? Number 17? Mm-hmm. Fugazi. Oh. I got I to say Fugazi. I got to say Fugazi. Oh. We're back so, so, even, even though, <laughs> you know, we go back and forth about oh, the yeah, football, we, basketball. Yeah, exactly, thing. exactly. <laughs> Chris Mullen is not the best player on Run TMC. It was Mitch Richmond. It was Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tim Hardaway, the inventor and the uh, instructor of the crossover. He brought the crossover to the NBA game, and understand. everybody has been trying to uh, evolve it and take it to the next level. But Tim, the UTEP two-step, he brought the crossover to the NBA. Yeah, uh, for real or for Daisy, Timmy? I'm going to say to for me, it's for real because Chris Mullen was the um, the staple stone of the Golden State Warriors when I got there. He got he 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 he, um, he got drafted in '85, and uh, when I came there, he took me up under his wing and he showed me how to be a professional. He's like a brother to you, right? It's like a brother, like Mitch and Rod Higgins. They all brought me up under their wings, and um, and Chris Mullen was the work ethic of that team, and everybody wanted to be in shape just like Chris, and we all wanted to go out there and win because we knew how hard and how passionate he was to go out there and play. So I would say, you know, for, for me, Chris Mullen. Wait, wait a minute, can you show that tape again? That looks like a beta. Is that, is that a beta tape? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've transfixed the Betamax tape. That's Beta. That's, that's, that's not even VHS. And here's the best part. As that's, Tim that's how we had. Uh, that's that's how all we had, had back that's in the day. All. The other thing you don't see Tim Hardaway doing because he only did it once in his career, mm. dunk. Right? Yeah, I, 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 he dunked yeah. once to prove that once. he could. Yep. And that was that, right? That was it. That was it. Lay up off the wrong leg and everything. Every, oh, I had a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, had, you, had, you had a bag of tricks? Oh, a lot of it. Yeah, a his biggest bag of tricks was a pen to paper telling the NBA which Knicks came off the bench so they could be suspended for no, games. No, no, no. It was very interesting. No, it was in my head. Yeah. It was in he was my like head. It was like David Stern. It's Timmy Hardaway. You got second? Ewing starts. That really Oh, yeah. The fight. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I was. I went right on in, in in the press room, and I said, "Yeah, you know, I, I if I'm not mistaken, they it is a rule that says <laughs> when there's a fight, you can't get off the bench." Patrick Ewing, John Starks, <laughs> Charles Oakley, oh, Larry Johnson. And if you may not remember, there's so many Knicks got suspended. They had to divide the suspensions between Game Six and Game Seven. So the Knicks uh, did not have a full complement of players for either game. I didn't know that part. Yeah. And that wasn't my fault. You yeah. know, that right. was, oh, it was yeah. clearly your fault. No, no, no. It, 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 based, rule, on, based on the story I just heard, that was your fault. The, but it, isn't it a rule? It's a rule. <laughs> it's a rule. It's a rule. When a fight happened, you, and at the end of that fight, you, you saw, uh, you saw uh, uh, Van Gundy. Why are you off the bench? Yes, he was upset. He was like, well, you got to go. Why are you on the and court? The best. Why, I think it might have been Patrick. But one of the guys on the Knicks came on the court, but never went past his own free throw line. Yep. Oh, here right? Go right, All right. So here's the fight on baseline. It's down in Miami, obviously. Playoffs, uh, late 90s, right? And you'll see Tim Hardaway at some point. Like uh, counting dudes. Oh, that was that was disrespectful right there. Well, no, he tried to, he tried to undercut him. Okay. Tossing anyway. a grown man like that. Well, I mean, here you go. Uh, but yeah, this is the fight we're talking about. And Timmy's like, oh, that's Patrick Ewing? Yeah. That's Charles Oakley. Oakley. I think I John saw John Starks. Starks. Yeah. Is that John Wallace? 44? Yeah, John Wallace. He was on the team. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell you this. He was killing us, too. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> They're like seventh game, sixth yeah. game. He was, he had, they lost, but that's he, he was. Ooh, wow. All right, we got much more coming up on the show. It's first in football. And Patrick. Mahomes is back in the news. There's no way the answer to that question is yes. Is it? It might be. We'll find out right after this. 
the world's best skateboard, BMX, and Moto X athletes are heading to X Games California to compete for gold. Download the free Caffeine TV app to watch all the best tricks on the X Games channel. You can tune in to catch Tony Hawk, Salema, Nigel Houston, Sky Brown, and more live from July 21st through July 23rd. And watch on demand anytime after. All right, that handsome guy lives on the corner of first in football. That handsome guy wins Super Bowls until this year, of course. Uh, but his uh, favorite target and uh, all-pro tight end Travis Kelsey talked about one of the intangibles that Patty Mahomes brings to the Kansas City Chiefs and its leadership. Here's what Travis Kelsey had to say. He'll get on guys. Yeah. He'll get on guys. If you're not running as a receiver, he'll get on you. He yeah. he needs those reps, and he feels how valuable those reps are, both in games and in practice. And, I mean, there's a reason why he's great. Yeah, the, listen, intangible is what makes all you guys great. It's not just, hey, you can play basketball. Hey, you can go up there. You have great hands and speed. It's the work you got to put in uh, and the intangible stuff that makes, that complements the great physical skills. And he's a problem. He's a problem for all of us in the AFC that dynasty. want to win a Super Bowl. They, I think they are a dynasty. <laughs> Actual dynasty. What do you mean you think? I, yes, they I are think. a dynasty. Well, good. We agree on that. All right. The <laughs> dynasty that, unfortunately, is coming to an end, no. like all dynasties no. do. No. The Not Steelers yet. didn't get to the 80s. The Cowboys didn't get to the 2000s, right? Mm -hmm. The New York Jets are starting their dynasty What today. about the Patriots? Patriots dynasty didn't get to 2020. That's right. Okay. right? But it, how long did they go? 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, uh, we all know it. We've all seen There's nothing else you can say about this kid. He's special in every single way on the field, off the field leadership. And if I'm Travis Kelsey, that's the smartest thing I could ever do. Just keep pumping him up. Yeah. He'll keep throwing me to football. Well, you know, you don't have to keep pumping him up. People want to add. And they, 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 don't, they don't know about Mahomes and, and what he does on the field and off the field. They're they asking how is he on the field. You got to go game speed all the time, no matter what. If you're going through drills, you got to go game speed. I used to go game, street, game speed in my basement when I didn't have a, a court outside, when it was cold outside. Right. I used to have a non-finished basement. I used to go game speed, dribbling through um, columns and just going in and out, really? in and out, dribbling behind my back. When you were a pro? No, when I was young. When I was oh, like in eighth grade, high school, I used to work on my game, work on my craft by doing that. And a lot of these young people don't know. When you go game speed, when you go out there on the court, it's easier. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Plex? Yeah. When you go gain speed, like Plex didn't go out there and just, you know, just jog through the, you know, go, go through the motions, then catch the ball. He had to go gain speed because he was competing and he had to be sharp, just like the other guys have to be sharp. That's what Mahomes want him to do, people to do. You got to be a leader. You want people to be sharp. So when we go out here and we play the game, we know exactly what to run, how to run it. And I had a ball right there to you. Hey, man, three Super Bowl appearances in five years. He's already won two. And I don't think that he's done. I, I think the, uh, the one thing that jumped off the page to me about Patrick Mahomes is that uh, I've seen people win and win early and get comfortable. Sure. And he doesn't have that attitude. He wants to continue to get better every single day. And obviously, Travis Kelsey, he, he, he's probably going to be the best. And Andy Reid's a big part the, of it, the, the too. Best but, the best but, tight end ever played a game. Like Pet Plex just said, he wants to be that person. He wants to keep going. That's what fuels him about the Patriots, about – Sure. About uh, – He's chasing somebody. Yeah, he cha he chasing – he chasing – Well, the next one's three. You got to get the three, right? Well, you well, got to go. get the three. Right. But he been right. three – like, like – like, like Steve Young, Troy right. Aikman, you right. got to get there. Right. And then you worry about right. Tom Brady. Tom, uh, but, 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 but Tom Brady been there and lost too now. Of course. Right. So, right. so right. he's right. been there and lost, but he, he had a great 20-year run. All right, let's go to our second of football. This is an interesting report out of Las Vegas, guys, because we were told a couple of days ago – that Josh Jacobs sat in his car with Max Crosby in the parking lot of the uh, Raiders facility right before the, uh, the uh, franchise deadline uh, hit 4 o'clock on Monday and was thinking he was going to get a deal done, thought it was close. There's a new report out there in Vegas now going, I don't know why he was sitting in that car. That deal was never close. That's crazy. Either way, the man sat in a car with Max Crosby yep. like a desperate teenager hoping for a yes from a prom date. And yeah. never got that phone call. Yeah. Don't matter if they were close or not. He thought they were getting the deal done. So he called Max Crosby and told him, hey, man, uh, you know, I want you to ride with me to the stadium. And I'm going to get ready to sign. Get, 
Yes. To get this deal that part of the story is true. And his agent called him and told him, we're close. We're going to get the deal done. And I said last week, we don't know what the numbers were from the Las <coughs> Vegas Raiders to Josh, to, to Josh Jacobs. So the, the, the report just came out that they weren't even close to getting the deal done. And I've said on, on several occasions that – uh, Josh Jacobs and Tony Pollard were going to be the two wide receivers to play under the franchise. Running backs, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah we're, and we're Pollard back. at least signed his back, I think it was in March. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was he was he uh, he knew what was going down. He was so he signed it. He's coming off the broken yeah. ankle, yeah. of course. He obviously wanted yeah. a bigger deal, but he signed it, was done with it, yeah. and he's all good, and he'll be showing up. Jacobs and Saquon are different. Yeah. Neither one's coming off an injury. Right. They're both coming off significant years where they carried their team to whatever levels of success you know, each franchise had, and they were expecting some yeah. type of multi-year deal mm-hmm. commensurate with Alvin Kamara mm-hmm. and, of course, Christian McCaffrey. So uh, it is a little different than Le- Pollard. Leverage versus no leverage. Exactly right. Uh, in any event, uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. And remember this. I don't think it's going to happen. But just keep in the back of your mind that the teams always have the right at any point now. They can rescind the franchise tag. It's the Josh Brown deal where late before you can now go get a job somewhere else, you rescind it, right? Josh Norman, excuse me, not Josh Brown, I apologize. Josh Norman, uh, you rescind it and you tell the guy, good luck, go start your career somewhere else. And it's too late to get any kind of money or deal from a team that you might want to play for. Again, I don't think it happens, but it is on the table if things really go south. All right, third of football, a day after making it into the Cincinnati Bengals ring of honor, Ocho Cinco decided, or he was asked, who do you think the best wide receivers in football are? Are you ready? He said, 1A, Devontae Adams. And here's... Chad Ochocinco giving you the rest of that yeah, answer. That like, 1A, Devontae Adams. 1B, Jamar Chase. And Justin Jefferson. What? Now hold on but a second. Up next, you know, when Devontae is done, is Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson by, by, by none. It's not even, not even close. Okay, so I'm confused. <laughs> that almost sounds yeah. like my list, yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So yes. uh, I was, you know, me and Chad know good receivers when we see him, and he's exactly correct. Yeah, no one's gonna listen. I, we're just confused with his numbering. How's everyone? Bought? But no one's gonna argue that those three guys are. I have to say the word arguably, although you could probably take it out. Right. Are the three best wide receivers in football today? And to be fair, doesn't matter what order you put them in. Right, right. Uh, it, it doesn't. Right. I mean, Devontae had, uh, what, 1,600 yards They're all yards legitimate uh, all-pro players, all right, three of them. Right, right. So, you, I don't care how you order them. Nobody's going to argue that they are the three top wide receivers in no football. Doubt. It's just weird how he said he, 1A, 1B, he, and 1B. Yeah. And I'm waiting for where the hell's 2 and 3 at. I don't know where you're going to put it. ABC, right? Yeah, right. Exactly right. 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 All right. This is a bad story, but it's uh, fourth in football for you. Uh, and, you know, some guys don't learn lessons from others. But Minnesota Viking wide receiver, he's their uh, uh, draft, first-round draft pick this year. Was driving a Lamborghini, I guess, yesterday, 140 miles per hour in a 50 mile per hour zone. Uh, got pulled over, thankfully, no accident, nobody got hurt. I don't even believe he's going to be uh, fined or suspended, uh, and he's lucky to be alive, frankly. Yes. According to the uh, police report, uh, he was on local roads, and uh, hopefully he has learned a valuable lesson. Don't be stupid. Right, right. Because right. we've 90, seen it happen before. Uh, you know what? He must have slowed down for the police to catch him. Because the police couldn't catch him. <laughs> he was right. gone. He once he's he threw past past yeah, he's doing 140. Yeah, in a 90 over the limit. Yeah, he was uh, the 23rd overall pick uh, in this past April's draft. So hopefully there's a little dose of reality. And he recognizes that he's a lucky man to be alive. I'm being told, eh, flag on the play. We've got a bonus play for you. It's my guy, Odell Beckham. Apparently, <laughs> all the rage now amongst NFL players is trying to learn how to box. Odell's on the left, not on the right, just in case you were curious. <laughs> and it's a great workout, number one. But, Plax, you guys talk about footwork all the time. It's a great workout for your feet, for footwork. Although these guys don't seem to be boxing like they want to box or know what the hell they're doing. 
Now, I'm not challenging him to a boxing match. Which but one? Who? The guy, well, the guy on the right, one. I got no shot against. Right. Uh, Odell one. Beckham, he throws better punches than Asante Samuel, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You really want that yeah. smoke, don't you? I, I haven't seen the video of Asante yet. I'll get it for you. And then later in the day, here's a happy get. No, that's Odell Beckham again. Doing his old happy no get more. I have tried that. It ain't easy. No, it ain't. <laughs> it ain't easy. And I just shot a 77 at Trump Bedminster. Cody shot a 96 well, on that I, same day. But what, that what is a I? tough way to hit a golf yeah, ball. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So he, he, you he, shot a what? 77. A 77. But, but, do, but doing that, I mean, so, he, that, he's scored. That's he, what they he, told you. So you didn't keep me score? No, Coach Sala was keeping score for both of us. Cody will oh, attest to oh, that. Oh, those pencils at Bad Minister got erasers. I don't bring pencils. I don't bring erasers. Uh, I just play golf. So you went lines. five over at Bad Minister. I yeah, went five right. over at Trump Bedman, so yes, I, I did. I, I don't believe it. You could not believe it all you You didn't want. finish five holes, Craig. Wow. wow. Oh, now oh, the truth yes. comes. Yes. We've only got yes. so much video evidence. Now the truth There we go. We have video evidence of you making a really nice par, though. Thank you. I did par 16, the signature hole. Uh, we got mid-show headlines coming up, and that, of course, means the New York Jets and the beginning of what is certain to be a dynasty. Aaron Rodgers uh, spoke this morning on the radio, and you're going to hear a little snippet of what he said right after this. Look out, AFC. Y'all in trouble. 77. Welcome back to the Carton Show on FS1. <laughs> Time for your mid-show headlines. And headline number one, Aaron Rodgers today was on New York Radio talking about this upcoming season, or Craig, possibly his yeah. upcoming seasons, plural. You, you know what we Jets. say in the clubs? Ooh, ooh. That's what we say. <laughs> we get one. We get two. We get three years of Aaron Rodgers as our quarterback. Yes, he's going to make $60 million per hour, so good for him and good for us because the dynasty has begun. And we got some sound of Aaron Rodgers talking about this potential dynasty that Craig thinks is happening. Um, you know, the Jets gave up a lot for me. Um, so, you know, to just play one year I think would be a disservice. Now, if that one year turns out to be a magical year, who knows? But... It's more than that. It's how my body feels. Really? He looks like he is in great shape. Looks like he even lost a couple pounds. Well, he does. How? Huh? How can you say that? He looks. He looks thin. He, he doesn't look like he's carrying extra weight. He does have heavy legs. I, I've said that <laughs> since we saw the first right, time. Right, right, Where right. are heavy legs? With, uh, look, here's the bottom line. You can try to you know, be critical all you want. You can try to be one of those guys that talks me off the ledge. It ain't working. I'm living on the ledge. The New York Jets are a Super Bowl contender for the next three years as long as Aaron Rodgers is our quarterback. Wow. And I understand, look, if they do win the Super Bowl this year, I would understand a guy going, Great way to end a career. Not a lot of guys, Michael Strahan, can end a career on a Super Bowl win. Jerome Bettis, and there's a handful of others. No way. So I would get it. Can I win and then do whatever I want to do? But the fact that he's committed to being here, if they don't win, means we are going to win, and we're going to win multiple. I don't care if you're in Cincinnati. I don't care if you're in Kansas City. I don't care if you're in Buffalo or L.A. with the Chargers or in South Beach eating ice cream at Keith. It don't matter to me. The New York Jets are the team you all got to worry about because that guy is in a good headspace. He's good emotionally, he's good physically, and we got the dogs to run with him. The New York Jets are the best team in football. Wow. Not named the San Francisco 49ers, they of course, or the, the Chiefs. Team in football. They're yeah. not the best team in football. They probably have the best defense in the AFC East. I'll give you that. Um, they did add McCall, uh, McCall Hardman. Hardman, Jr., so that's right. So bring some more explosiveness to the offense yep. with Alan Lazard, uh, Randall Cobb, and, yep. and, and Garrett Wilson. And... Uh, but can they consistently do it over 17 weeks? I believe that the Buffalo Bills are still the cream of the crop in that yes. division. Well, it's like I always say, the, the, the dynasty. That's what <laughs> I like to say. No. The Chiefs is over. The Jets are just starting. Wow. And it's about time we get to have some fun and some joy in our lives. And Aaron Rodgers represents both of those things. Thank you, Cody Decker. You're welcome. Well, headline number two. Headline number two is the New York Jets. <laughs> 
have Aaron Rodgers committed for multiple seasons in New Jersey with Gang Green and the New York Jets, meaning that the New York Jets can win multiple Super Bowls. Go ahead, Cody, what else you got? Actual headline number headline two. Headline number three. Oh, God. The New York Jets got a full commitment today, a verbal commitment from Aaron Rodgers that he is committed to multiple years running the offense here in New York oh, with the New York Jets, meaning that we're going to win multiple Super Bowls. What else you got, Cody? <laughs> Correct. Headline number 15. <laughs> the New York By Jets. Team. <laughs> 17, 18, and 19. Oh, I'm just so happy. And even you three knuckleheads can't make me upset today. No matter what you say to me, I'm going home happy. Headline right. number two, a better team in the Baltimore Ravens what? had Lamar Jackson show up a little bit early. The new look Ravens right now have a few new players. Odell yeah, Beckham. They look good in good. slow motion. Yes, I they do. Nelson that. Aguilar on the team now. Zay Flowers joining the team. And Todd Munkin now running the offense. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Are the new look Ravens think contenders? That's I a think new look. When they say the boy got his own money, he got his own money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's called 185 guarantee. That's how that looks. It looks good. It looks happy, relaxed, content. Life is good. I got my bag, as we call it these days. And you're not going to talk me down. He even showed up a couple days early. Yeah, you yes, picked the Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC. Yeah, North. I do. By the way, I love the Baltimore Ravens this year. I think the depth they have at wide receiver. I think Todd Munkin, obviously, being there, changing the offense and the way they run the offense, which is more pass happy now than it has been in his career takes a little pressure off of him from the running standpoint, right. adds pressure, of course, and him being a better pocket quarterback. But people forget that their defense was pretty problems. good last year up until the fourth quarter. They caved late, but part of that was the offense couldn't stay on the field in the fourth quarter. I think the Baltimore Ravens are an absolute Super Bowl contender this year. They are. Uh, they still have one of the top five defenses in all of football, but w when it comes down to it, they still have to stop, jump off Joe Burrow. No doubt. And the Cincinnati Bengal offense, and that's going to be a handful. Yeah, I just, I do remember if you go back to last year, you know, with a backup quarterback, they're on the one yard line, yeah. Yeah. and if they don't fumble on the one yard line and have a return for a touchdown, the Ravens are going to beat the Bengals in Cincinnati. Uh, that being said, I know each year's different, and you can't compare this year to what happened last year, but they weren't that far away last year. Obviously, Lamar gets hurt, everything changes. And I just think, do not sleep on them. They are a lock to be in the postseason this year. Headline number three, where are you feeling really good about your Jets? Yes, Giants fans? because the Jets have a dynasty starting now, Cody. Well, You've heard. Giants fans aren't feeling the exact same way because Saquon Barkley removes everything New York Giants from uh, all of his social media profiles. I hate these stories. Why do you hate this? Because it's stupid. It's real. Like, we're talking about grown men. And, oh, my God, he took uh, an emoji face off of his Twitter account. Yeah. Like, that means something. We know he's upset. He did an interview. He told you he was going to be upset. So now we're going to read into the fact that he uh, whitewashed his social media accounts of everything to do with the New York Giants. It, here's the reality. It don't mean anything. If he plays football this year, he's wearing number 26 for Big Blue. That's his only choice. So you can take all the giant stuff off your social media stuff. You can play that game. It's like we're 13 year old girls in middle school. Like, what are we doing? Like, it is what it is. It sucks for you. I'm sorry. I agree. You have a choice you have to make now. It didn't play out the way you wanted. Maybe your agent did a bad job. Maybe John Maurer and the New York Giants lied easy. to you. It doesn't matter. You're in a specific spot right now. You have a choice, and it's your choice. No one else can make it for you. You have the right to sit out and not play football. I don't believe for a minute a guy that loves playing football is going to do that, considering in his short career he's already lost more than a year to injury. You're going to make $10 million to do it. And by the way, if you want to tell the owner, don't talk to me, we got nothing to say to each other, if you want to have a chip on your shoulder, if you want to be a bad guy, if you want to you know, keep your lip tight to the media, you can do all that stuff. But it's on you. Whitewashing your social media accounts, like, who cares? I'm sorry. I hate you. Those stories bother me. Like, hey, did you see that? You know, Saquon Barkley <laughs> no longer has a giant helmet on his Instagram account. I don't care. Play football but, but, but or don't I, play football. But, but can I say this? Yeah. Why are you getting mad at Saquon Barkley? 
I'm getting mad at Cody. What? I, I mean, I mean, I yeah, mean, Saquon Barkley just it's all, just took it off. There's two but, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah. why are you getting mad at him? Because he took it off. He, well, he doesn't not, have a right I to take it off. I don't care if he takes it off right, or puts right, it on. Right, but you should be mad at the people that are uh, overreacted to, overreacted to it. it. Sorry, Cody. I am guessing. And that you just overreacted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not saying. It's the point. It's like him, him whitewashing his social media accounts. He's not. He's not. It, it, it don't he, mean he, anything. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. So why are we talking about? It's like it? that, that. Like that decision. You're reading into yeah. it what? just the way. <laughs> exactly. He wants exactly. Got you. exactly. That's he's what I'm trying to tell you. you. That's what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. You just going overboard. Why yeah. are we still talking about? He it? did. He did it for this exact right, reason exactly. right here. Listen, play football. Don't play football. I don't. Care what sticker you have on your Instagram account? It, it doesn't. It, it, oh, you can. I don't. It doesn't yeah. matter. I hate that it's a story. Like I'm making, making it story. more. I'm yeah, so it I more. thought we were mad. I don't know. <laughs> hey, yeah. did you see that he took away the laughing face emoji for? Shut up. Who cares? Play football for ten million bucks or don't play football for ten million bucks. You got screwed. I'm with you. No, uh, the you Giants say, wait, screwed wait, 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 wait. Let's move on. Huh? Let's, let's move on. I can't let's move go. on. Yes, we can move on because you playing right into the hands of what he wants you to do. Right there. Play football. Don't play football. Right. Right. Cody, what's the next headline, please? I, I the next Cody. Headline. Cody. The Cody. No, 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 no. It's, it's not, not the Jets. It's not, it's not the, Jets. the Jets. It is not the Jets. It's not. No. It's calm down better. for a little bit. Calm down. Tonight. Yes. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Headline number four. Angels are going for their fourth straight win, which is bad news for everyone that's a baseball fan because that man right there, Shohei Otani, is, is potentially on the trade block 11 days away before he might be wearing a different uniform. But if the Angels continue to win, and by yeah. the way, they are playing Dude. against the last place Pittsburgh Pirates, he might stay Do play. they play the Yankees tonight? They don't. Then they're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> then they're going to lose. What am I, I mean, what do you want me to tell you? So, so there's a possibility that they can get into the wild card spot before the trade deadline. It is possible. they got to keep mm -hmm. winning, they're but they're not. Right? Four, four out of the wild card as we currently Listen, that, that means they're, they're close enough. You, you would think if the idea for any team is to try to win, right. you do whatever you can to win, mm -hmm. which would mean you don't trade them, right? Of course. But yeah. if you recognize we're probably not good enough to win a World Series and we can get four, five, six, seven players, I don't know. I don't care. I don't think, I don't think he gets dynasty. traded this time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I believe that the Angels are going to try to make a, make the playoffs and they won't trade them. There you go. Plaxico Burris is on the record. Put that out. Well, people need to hear that. Um, <laughs> Plax says that the Angels are not going to trade Shohei Otani. There not, you go. Not doing the season. There you go. There's a, there's a crazy report out there that the Philadelphia Phillies have interest mm -hmm. in making a trade. They should have But, interest. you know, there's a, you see a lot of these fugazi reports now out there. This team wants them. That team wants them. This team wants them. I mean, boom. Here's all I know. The New York Jets are starting a dynasty right now. And Aaron Rodgers spoke publicly this morning and said, I'm here for the long haul. It wouldn't be right to Jet fans for you to just show up, not win the is Super Bowl, hit and come back. Number five? There huh? isn't. There isn't. Okay. Guess what Aaron Rodgers didn't do today? <laughs> he didn't take all the Jet green off of his Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because he's a man. That's right. Oh. That's he, right. He you know what he did? What did he do? He took the Green Bay Packers off. That's what I'm talking about. You got to be loyal to the guy that pays you. And we're paying him $60 million this year. <laughs> so he's loyal to our green, right, Blacks? Wow. And when I say our green, I mean your green and mine. I'm a no, fan uh, you no, play. My green is Michigan State green. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let him know. Mm -hmm. Not, Not want to change Jet that. Green. Let him What's know. coming up next, guys? I totally forgot. Oh, we're talking football. And that means we'll be talking Jets. I will see if these guys can beat me in an obvious argument that the Jets are the team to beat in the AFC in the entire Super Bowl this year. So this year. is an argument now? It's a conversation. It's a conversation, not an argument. We're going to converse. Or right. some people say, we're going to conversate. Right. That's Cody Decker right there. That's Plaxico Burris right there. He's in a bad mood today. No, I'm that, not. of course, right here is Timmy Hardaway, the NBA Hall of Famer. And, you know, before we get back to all the football stuff, uh, just a quick baseball note. You know, the Atlanta Braves busted out Mr. Freeze last night they again. They did, yeah. And that's a guy that uh, wears a full-on, like, leotard and runs against some random guy out of the crowd Unitard. who usually thinks he's a pretty good athlete and can beat the Freeze in a race. It's like a 100-yard dash or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy had the race won. The freeze was finally going down. 15 feet away. You got to oh. believe. Oh. Boom. Oh. Uh, Here comes the angle. Look at these glasses. Could you run better than well, that? Well, yes, because they give the fan a head start. 50 yards. The, the idea is that I got a 50-yard head start in a 100-yard race. Plaques ain't beating me. All right? What? 
You ain't beating me if you... you Max, you're giving me 50 out of 100. Don't, don't do me. Oh, he just huh? called your wow. name out. If we Ass started no at the TV. same spot, I can't beat you. Uh, but if you uh, give me 50 I, yards, I, I, that, I got you. Challenge! There's 50 there, yards in that street outside right now. There's I think no it's a challenge. Sport that you will be able to beat me. Ooh. I agree. Not one. I, well, I, if, I beat you in tennis. I, I don't even damn his horseshoes. Beat, beat you in pickleball. No, you Beat you in darts. Pickleball, I don't have to move pickleball. I'm just like, boom. I don't have to move. <laughs> Anyhow, my guy, I mean, he's got the race won. The freeze is going to take a loss. He doesn't take a lot of losses. And somehow Ooh. the damn turf monster. Oh, his knee is all right. Yeah, somewhere Daniel Jones is going, I feel your pain. Buddy. Yeah. I feel your pain. I've seen that a couple of times. We have seen that before where the turf reaches up and just grabs a guy's ankles. Mm-hmm. Just like that. So another W goes to the freeze there. Uh, let's get back to football if we can. Uh, 11 o'clock Eastern, good time to talk New York Jet football. Aaron Rodgers did a little talking himself today. And Garrett Wilson did a little talking in the last 24 hours as well. Why don't we start with the Garrett Wilson audio, which I believe the guys have ready to go. This is Garrett Wilson going into year number two. Had a great rookie season with uh, Zach Wilson and Mike White and Joe Flacco. Now he's got Aaron Rodgers. Garrett's thinking big things, isn't it? Go ahead. I'm not going to beat around the bush, man. We want to win a Super Bowl. Yes, and, uh, yes. You know, you don't make moves in the offseason like we did unless you're trying to get there. You know, that's that's the mindset. And, and like I said, you know, we want to have those expectations as athletes. No one wants to feel like no one's, you know, got an eye on y'all or no one expects anything out of y'all. You know, we love that. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the mindset that we're embracing in our facility. You know, we, we know where we want to get. And, um, you know, personally, I think it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, it is okay to talk about it. You can't be afraid of it. And if you're a young stud like his, you live this life, being a, an all-world talent when you first come into the league. When you turn around, you had Ben Roethlisberger, obviously Eli Manning later on. If you're Garrett Wilson, you're like, yes. Because he can now, without overstating it, if I'm Garrett Wilson, and I know I'm going to be the target of a lot of Aaron's throws, I can look at the possibility of 100 catches, yeah. 1,500 yards that kind of year. I, I'm pumped. Man, there's a different mentality from a wide receiver in the offensive standpoint. Waking up, going into work in the morning, knowing that you have an Aaron Rodgers on the center and sure. a Hall of Fame quarterback, and and not Zach Wilson. So, <laughs> so the whole mentality and the mindset is different because you know that you have a a good a great opportunity to win yep. football games, get to the playoffs, and maybe. Win a Super Bowl, just like I said earlier, they definitely have the team in the roster to get it done. And Plax, isn't, get it isn't done. there a part of it also where you know you know, you know what Justin Jefferson does, you know yeah. what Devonte does, right. and you feel like you're as good as those guys. You want to be in that conversation. So yeah, it's about the team, it's right. about the Super okay. Bowl, but you also know stat wise, right. I've got a shot to be amongst the league leaders. He does from a talent standpoint. Yeah. He is not as good as those guys athletically. And talent-wise, but when you bring in the Aaron Rodgers, it kind of makes the playing field oh, even yeah. for everybody, especially Devontae, especially for Devontae Adams, because we have no idea who, well, who his point. quarterback's going to be. Like, is Jimmy Garoppolo his quarterback? And even if he is, it ain't we, we, Derek we Carr. It's not Aaron Rodgers. So uh, I appreciate what Gary Wilson said. Now, Aaron Rodgers uh, spoke this morning uh, before practice. And again, if you're a Jet fan, this is music to your ears. If you're a Bills, Patriots, or Dolphins fan, this has to be concerning for you. You know, all jokes aside, because he sees us as a multi-year project. Listen to Aaron Rodgers earlier today. He, uh, he spoke on the radio this morning, and he also spoke a little bit yesterday out there at Florham Park, New Jersey. Here's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it's spectacular. I mean, that's that's what you want. You want uh, you want to be a part of a place that has high expectations, and uh, there's a lot of positivity around here, which I think is a good thing. Um, but you know, we got to temper expectations early on at camp and and focus on the the little things to get there. Yeah, listen, we have expectations we've never had before, and now I've got to I've got to you know kind of slap myself in a minute. Uh, because the first six games ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not easy. No, right? no, the wait, 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 wait. It gets come, easier. You come to that realization? No, no, I just want to I mean, keep it straight. Because, because uh-huh. you said yeah. y'all was going 17, 16. Oh, no. no. I think we are, Timmy. <laughs> but I think 
we're not going to win every game by 30 is all I'm saying. If you guys, I don't know if you guys can even get this, but if you look at the Jets' schedule, I'll even acknowledge, and I talked to Coach Sal about this two days ago when I shot that 77 <laughs> um, uh, playing golf with him. And, they, and, uh, and, huh? and you was upset that people call y'all delusional. D- me as a Jet fan? You as a fan. We never have New York moments fan, like this. Period. Timmy, we never get this. Don't you understand? <laughs> this is a once-in-my-lifetime just moment. En- just enjoy it before the I am starts. enjoying it, which is why I you, you enjoying it too much. I uh, know. <laughs> no, I tell you why I'm not. Because if we lose to the Bills in week one, Ooh. all the joy goes out the window. And right? you will be wearing a Josh Allen jersey. Based on our agreement, yeah. I said I would. That's right. What about what if they lose the Hall of Fame game? You were you were saying that was going to turn you. There's no chance we lose the Hall of Fame game. No That's chance. That's not even on the table. I had a no long stars talk. are playing. I had a long talk with Coach about it. I suggested over six holes the other day. You start Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> you're playing for a full half in this game. And, and how did I go? And you set the tone. How did I go? And he said, you're crazy. We're not playing Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You are crazy. And I go, then maybe you're not the right guy to coach this team. <laughs> I have to say it. I had to keep it real, right? I think you beat the Cleveland Browns by 50 uh, in a week no, and a half. Or no. the first uh, you know, uh, a week uh, in uh, August for the Hall of Fame game, which is coming up in a couple weeks, right? Right. In any event, that's the story for another day. Aaron Rodgers is committed to being here for a number of years. This is something that's new to us. Expectations. Now, if you look at the first six weeks, I can tell you how the Jets season is going to come out. No, all jokes aside, yes, I want them to win every game, but the New York Jets start off with a very difficult uh, early schedule. If the Jets are three and three or better, they're winning the Super Bowl. Mm. Okay, that's just a route. But listen, this, this, Mm. these seasons uh, that these teams put together Mm -hmm. are day to day and week to week. We haven't even talked about, you know. Guys being injured. Well, I can't uh, th- count th- th- that. Th- things of that nature. Right. So there are so many components to going to a football team, day to day and week to week, having success. That it can it can change at any moment. I can't speak to injuries, but I can speak to this, and I have to assume everybody's <laughs> okay. healthy to have this conversation. Okay, you beat you Buffalo beat New Bills. England. You beat New England. That's right. You win week five. You lose at Philly. You got a buy. You got an early buy. Yeah, week seven. That's no good. Okay. You want your bye to be week 10, week 11, around that time because you're going to play, what, 10 straight weeks in a row. So right. you want a, a, a later bye. Well, I can't change that. That's where my bye is, right? Right. But right. here's the deal. Those the, things make a difference. You look at the first six. Bill's a playoff team. Cowboys a playoff team. And Jets so at Giants. What are you talking right. about? I'm going to be at that game. I have to be there. Jets at Giants. What week definitely. eight? Yeah. Okay, we can go together. Yeah. There you go. No, you, you sit on your side. I'm going to stand up and be on the sideline. Sideline? Yeah, he's going to be on the sideline. I'm going to be on the sideline. You're going to be sitting in the stand. Right. You know, he, Which sideline? Which wide man is? He won a Super Bowl <laughs> yeah. with New York Giants. Yeah. So I'm I'm guaranteeing yeah. that he's going to be with the New York Giants Absolutely. on the okay. sideline. He's going to be like hey. this. You're going to be walking down. Hey, Flex, how you Look, doing? Listen, Craig, he might go like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Craig will be sitting there with five men with but, his face painted yeah, with the white stripes down the middle let's, let's go. In, the, in, the, in the green on both sides. Week, week one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> week one. Put it back up, guys, real quick. Uh, I'm acknowledging it's tough. Week one against the Bills, that ain't easy. At Dallas, you not might go, easy. You might go on two. Not easy, but we're not losing both games. Oh. One and three. I'm giving you that. First so, four weeks. So we lose to the Bills, the, the Cowboys, and the Chiefs. One right. and three. You think that's what's going to happen? Reality check. Okay. Exactly. Reality, Reality check. I'll check. take the check all you want. Ooh. Kansas City's got to come to my building. I don't see it. I don't give a damn where they go. They can play outside the park. Alive. Denver's a joke. <laughs> Philadelphia's got that Super Bowl uh, year after uh, snooze fest, right? One and three. Dallas Cowboys, Dak throwing after the three first picks. Month. Right? You know what I mean? Hey, hey, it could happen. But I, don't, event, I don't think so. You guys not, are not, not going to doubt it. Dak's going to have his best game of his career in week two. I am not letting <laughs> you do it. I'm not letting you do it. Aaron Rodgers is committed to multiple years as the one New York three. Jets. New York Jets after the first month. By the way, look how we end the season. Look at those six games. Uh-huh. Atlanta win, Houston win, Miami win, yeah. Washington win, Cleveland win, New England win. Impressive. That's six straight. That By is, the way, to end the season. That looks like seven straight. Yeah, because yeah, Miami's there and we're 12 also. You know, you're right. you're going to need it after you start one and five. Listen, we oh. lost our last six to end last year. We win our last seven, ten this year on our way right to a Super Bowl appearance. By the way, remember Lane Kiffin? 
Yeah. Oh, Lane Kiffin. yeah, sure yes. do. Yes. No, I, I want to bring this up because Lane Kiffin's always good for a funny joke hit every now and then. Yes. Even when he may not be joking, he, of course, is the Ole Miss head coach, and he's traveled around quite a bit. Yes. Lane Kiffin had a press conference yesterday for SEC Media Day, and it went viral. And here's why. Watch this. What's your mom's name? <laughs> wow. <Lame. laughs> So he decided not to I cut his hair. I, I gotta ask my dad hair. some questions now. Uh, that's complete. There's no context to that at all. So let me tell you what, what went on there. Apparently, uh, it was pointed out that the reporter asking him questions looked quite similar to yeah. Lane. Mm -hmm. So he was asking who right. the reporter's mom was because maybe Monty Kiffin, you know, might have slept with her. So, oh. so did Lane style his hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm with his hair. What's up with his hair? Put it back up. Hey. Yeah, he looks like been he's living on a beach. Hey, he's did, did Lane stuff. style his hair like that on purpose, or did he just <laughs> wow. walk out of the room? And just, I, 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 I think God. he just walked out the room and just did that. I can tell you, that, that guy, uh, I know him a little bit, always oh, up for a good time. Oh, yes. And the answer is rarely ever no. Yeah, Lane is fresh off a beach. I'll tell you <laughs> yes, that. Yes, he is. That's, exactly, that's exactly right. Anyway, that happened at SEC Media Day. And you got the obvious laughter that you expect yeah. when you're asking about a guy's mom. <laughs> wow. Hey, Madden's come out with all their 99s and uh, some other guys' rankings, and you react to one of two ways. Some guys are ticked off at how they get ranked. Other guys love how they get ranked. But you'll be surprised where Jalen Ramsey got ranked and whether or not he liked it right after this on FS1. First in football, where handsome Craig resides. There you go. Let's start with this. Jalen Ramsey is most likely a Hall of Fame cornerback. I'll give him that, right? Mm -hmm. He's now, of course, uh, over there with the Miami Dolphins, but ain't nobody going to say that he's the best cornerback in football other than the people that run Madden 24 who listed him as the top-ranked cornerback oh. in all of football. Plaxico Burris. You played against Jalen. We all respect Jalen. Had a great career. But Jalen Ramsey's best football is behind him. It ain't in front of him. Ooh, I don't think his best football is behind him. I think he's just he's been giving up way too many big plays in the last couple of years. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't rank him as a top-ranked defensive back right now. I, he's I, not. I would have to give it to Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, that was but, a good tackle right there it, against Steve. The best thing that happened <laughs> to Trayvon Diggs was when he went to the University of Alabama and Nick Saban moved him from wide receiver to cornerback. And the, the reason, one of the reasons why Trayvon Diggs is so good because he understands routes. Sure. He understands route combinations because he was a wide receiver. So that does allow him to, to be able to gamble and to, and to cheat on some routes and to be right. And he... And when you look at the interceptions that, that he gets, he's a wide receiver when the ball goes in the air. That's why he's making a, lot, a ton of interceptions. Yeah, he's a great cornerback. He's a, he's and he's a, a cornerback that does not get a lot of attempts now. And he's people happy. respect him. And now listen, I think sometimes guys get a little crazy reacting to video games and how they're ranked. But I also respect the fact that all these kids grew up playing video games and Absolutely. wanted one day to be a 99 or whatever the case may be. Trayvon Diggs not happy. Not just with the fact that Jalen Ramsey is the highest-rated cornerback, but that he's not. <laughs> so the whole game away. <laughs> so there you go. He got an 87 overall. And like you just said, Plax, throw the whole game away. Uh, I am messing around. How could I be an 87? I mean, I would go Trayvon Diggs 1, Jalen Ramsey 2, Sauce Gardner 3, Pat Sertain Jr. Yair four. Alexander's a pretty yeah. good player, too. Yeah, uh, Darius Slade, Stephon Gilmore, so Tredavious White. So I would say it is pretty accurate, but I would put Trayvon Diggs at one. Some of that is off of reputation, too. Like Stephon Gilmore, who had a great career before being right. uh, traded or going uh, over to Dallas, yo, know, isn't the same guy he was either. It happens. That's yeah, football. Yeah. So some of it's reputation, but I love the fact where guys, you'll get ticked off. It's a video game. Yeah, yeah right? I, I, I wouldn't You get don't get paid off. based on what Madden says. Right. You don't. Right? I, 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 that's why I was asking Plex well, earlier in the week. Well, when Tom was playing, they didn't have video games. Yes, we did. You know, yeah, we, you ain't that old. We, we, we did have had video games. Well, when he I'm, worked, I'm, he played Pong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Black and white TV. I'm, 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 on the <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the cover. I'm on the What's cover. I'm on the cover of the NBA. <laughs> 
video game. Okay. Yes, there you go. He went from I don't play games so I was on the cover. Hey, that's right. Wait a second. I thought you didn't don't, care. Don't get sensitive on me, man. You, you got sensitive with me? me. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get sensitive on me? He's all days with sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's yeah. been sensitive with you all day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. How was Pong growing up? Was that, was that an easy game to play? No, it was not. <laughs> no, it was not. When uh, Texas it, came it, out, it, 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 it rock him, sock him, rock him, Yeah, that was fun until, you know, we figured everything out. Okay, here's a second ad football for you right now, and that is Robert Sala, but not talking about, you know, Aaron Rodgers or Garrett Wilson, talking about Dalvin Cook right there. What did Robert Sala have to say about the possibility of Dalvin Cook becoming a Jet? Go ahead. Uh, with Dalvin, obviously you never want to say no to a great player. Um, I'll leave Joe to that one. But, uh, you know, there's I know there's a lot of contractual stuff that goes with it, but uh, but he is a good one. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I kind of broke up on us there. He basically said, you know, you never turn your back or turn or t- say no to a great player, but it's got to fit into a system. It's got to fit financially into your cap and all that. <laughs> so he was kind of noncommittal either way. Obviously, if you're the New York Jets, Brees Hall was their stud running back last year as a rookie until he tore his ACL against the Denver Broncos. Yes. I talked to Coach about this a couple days ago. They believe physically he is going to play early this year, but they'll keep him on a quote-unquote pitch count, and they're not going to let him get crazy carries. They've also put him on the pup list. Now, the pup list should not scare you. 20 years ago, yeah, it meant you were done for the year. Now it doesn't mean anything. It just means you can carry some extra guys, and then at any point that you want to activate him, you're allowed to activate him. And, of course, you know their practices are limited. But uh, he starts off on the pup list for the Jets. But the Jets believe physically he's going to play this year and not the last month of the season, early in the season. I miss ACL. You never know, um, right. especially playing on turf and, and playing the running back position. I know it's a lot of, you know, jump, jumping and cutting, especially the way that he runs the football. So uh, I, I would say if he plays, it will probably be around, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, one sure. of those things. But he's still not removed 12 months from ACL yet. And I tell you, I know money is a part of it. Cap's a part of it. Dalvin Cook going right. to the Jets, right. much like if you went to the Dolphins, yeah, yeah. is a game changer because I can't count on Brees Hall today. No. And no disrespect to the other three or four running backs on the Jet roster, you know, those aren't going to be you know, stars either. Yeah. If I could bring a Dalvin Cook in on a one-year deal, which allows me to let uh, Brees Hall heal properly and not risk you know, the knee being wrong, boy, if I'm the New York Jets and I am going for a Super Bowl this year, I bring Dalvin Cook in, why wouldn't I? But Man. Brees Hall, excuse me, yeah. Brees Hall, he'll be pissed. Excuse no, he, my he, language. He, 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 I guess he would. He because he, he wants to come back and play for his team. He's not healthy. He, I know he's not healthy, I, and I know that he's not ready. But when he thinks he is ready, and and he sees Dalvin Cook there running and taking his reps, and yeah. it's going further. He, they need if they bring um, Dalvin Cook in, they they need to go to Brees Hall and say, look. This is a year. It's a one-year deal. This is a one-year deal. This is right. the year where you get yourself together, get yourself right. 100%. But they got to talk to them. You know how they don't talk to these players. You know how they don't communicate with these yeah, players. But if a guy communicate, if, if they communicate with you, then it'll settle well or better with you when somebody else comes in. I'll say this. All the other camps open up next week, you know, different days uh, throughout the week next week. I'm still surprised that Dalvin Cook has signed. Me too. Signed. Me too. It's crazy. Because he's healthy. He's coming off four straight thousand-yard seasons. He played all 17 games last year. He's a big reason why Minnesota. Obviously, Justin Jefferson, the biggest reason why they went to the playoffs. I know they lost to the Giants in that first round. But they're walking away from Dalvin Cook. And I'm saying to myself, he can walk right to me. I need a guy like that. I mean, if I'm the New York Jets or the Miami Dolphins for a $5 million price tag, I'm going to get down. 100% with yeah. you on that. And even, even if you're the Las Vegas Raiders, you talk about rescinding a franchise tag, if that number was not close between the Raiders and Josh Jacobs, do they rescind the franchise tag? and insert Dalvin Cook for $5 million. Yeah, there's a lot of optionality there depending on what some teams do, but Dalvin Cook is a guy that multiple teams have to want right now. If I'm Dalvin Cook, to be fair, I ain't going to the Raiders. I want to go to a team that's got a better shot to win. He wants to play football. Yeah, that's also true. All right, let's go to third football, talking about running backs. Uh, Seventh-round draft being out of Rutgers was a key part of the Super Bowl run for the Chiefs. That's my main man Isaiah Pacheco right there. Now, uh, Isaiah got hurt late, had some off-season surgery, but will absolutely 
be ready for week one, according to Kansas City. That's big, of course, because he's now their incumbent, you know, starting tailback. And wait a minute. Isn't this the same guy on Monday mm -hmm. that you blame the running back market on? Yes. Isaiah Yes, Pacheco. I did. It's his fault. Well, how is it his fault? I'll tell you why. Because if I know I can find a credible starting tailback in the seventh round out right. of Rutgers, then right. I ain't got to give Saquon Barkley $30 million guaranteed because <laughs> I can go find another guy. Hey, that, was a, that was a gem in a haystack. That was a diamond in a haystack yeah. that those guys found, which Andy Reid Re Re has basically been doing his whole career, finding guys and inserting them into his offense and watching them have the ultimate success. Now, the other teams, they had a chance to get them, right? Everybody had a chance okay, to get them. Okay, there you go. Yeah, they, there they you go. Out. The Chiefs they, they, didn't know what they were getting with Isaiah Pacheco. That's called dumb luck. And wow. Obviously, wow. obviously, he's a big part of the offense because <laughs> Come we're, on, man. we're talking about Isaiah Are you Pacheco. See, I yes. guess. Right. By the way, he had 83 yards per game okay. on average. He had four yeah. touchdowns in the second half. They knew half. what he could do. That's uh, why he started. Nah, they had no idea. They got, they got lucky in that one. Ain't nobody ever said we got a gay kid from Rutgers. He's going to be good. <laughs> wow. That has not been said wow. in a very, very long time. Pacheco. Yeah. I'm and I like this. Isaiah Pacheco. I, apparently you don't. No, I do. No, you don't. But no. I blame him. No, no, you, you, don't, you, can, you, you blame cannot him blame him. Yes, I do. It, it was other teams that could have got him. Everybody could have got him. Right. Everybody yeah. could have got him. And but he they chose. Any good. They, <laughs> he, he was and everybody could have got Brock Purdy, too. That's right. And you you think San Francisco knew what they had in Brock Purdy? <laughs> they had no idea. They well, walked no, into No, no, no. They did not have no idea. They walked idea. right into a rainbow. Hey, That's all they but did. They, but uh, Kansas City knew what they had in Pacheco. Andy Reid did. Listen, Andy Reed did. I, I respect Andy Reid a great deal, but this is what you guys have talked about all week, and that is when you have Patrick Mahomes, everybody else gets better. That's why you have Scott. Isaiah oh, he, won, he won better because of – Of uh, course he, he was. He better was. because his his line. His line got him open, got them to get through the through the. Holes. Anyhow, I'm glad that Isaiah Pacheco is going to be okay for week right, one. Right. I hope he's not okay for what is it? Week three we play him or week I, four? I, 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 I hope he runs like 300 yards on y'all. <laughs> I, I, I just hope he runs 300 it's week yards. Four when they play, uh, you and that'll be a homecoming for Isaiah because yeah. that game is here. Oh yeah. Sure oh, oh yeah. There'll be a lot of oh, rookies. Oh, oh yeah. At least, at least, at least, at least 220. At least 220. He's I wonder how many tickets Isaiah yards. Pacheco's got to buy for the game against the New York Jets. Yeah, he's expensive. <laughs> I mean, he's only a seven-round pick. Uh, right, right. Seven round pick. You can't afford to buy more than a couple tickets. That's right. true. Uh, real quick, we go to fourth in football. That's why they get him now. <laughs> they know that. <laughs> you right, go get right. your old tickets right now. That's Roger Goodell. He's the tall guy there. The shorter man is uh, multi-billionaire Josh Harris. He owns the Sixers, the New Jersey Devils, and he is now the proud owner of the Washington Pigskins as the uh, team will eventually be known as. And here's what happened yesterday. After the deal was announced, the official unanimous vote amongst the other owners, uh, apparently there's a, there were a couple sports bars in the D.C. area that are known as Washington football watering holes. Okay. And they were all celebrating the fact that the Wicked Witch is dead. Dan Snyder's out of town. We finally got rid of Dan Snyder. And as the story goes, uh, Josh Harris called the owner of those two respective bars, called the Old Ox and the Bullpen, and he said it's Josh Harris. He was told that there was some celebrating going on amongst football fans of those two establishments, and he said the next round of drinks for the whole bar on me. Let's go. That's how you win over a fan that's base. That's how you win over a fan base. That is a base. very, very smart move. And, and that wasn't by Josh nothing. That's, that's a tax write off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have the Louis the Eighth up there right, right now. Dude, just buy. I, he, he should. He should just buy the whole bar. Yeah, he <laughs> might. By the way, guy just dropped six billion right. on, uh, on the commander. Yeah, yeah, so he I, can I, drop a thousand bucks on a couple drinks. Right. Yeah, and you right? bought me a beer. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no. He said the next round is on me. So you could get whatever you want. I'll take that bottle of Louis right up. Right, you want, uh, 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 like, like, like two or three shots in the week. <laughs> See, it's so funny how we view that differently because I wouldn't have gotten a drink. I would have gotten wings because they're expensive these days. The chicken price is going sky high. I'd be like, give me a dozen wings. I don't care. Fine, okay. sure, I'll take a drink. Too. About wait, to wait, say. No, no, you, I, no, you had, no he said the next do. round. Oh, so just drinks it's, only? Just drinks only. There's no food right. involved. He said the next round. Then I'm in for the bubblegum vodka. Let's go. All good. Move. Huh? Yeah, they make it. Yeah, they make it. <laughs>
they do make it. I love it. Bougie. I wish you would be bougie just one The time. only bougie thing I do, my drink of choice uh, is Grand Marnier. Yes. Grand yes. Marnier and Coke good. all day. That's yes. your thing. Yeah. Ice and no ice. Ice. Of yes. course yes, ice. Sir. I'm a, I'm yes, sir. A, I'm a, I'm a, that's right. I'm a, a man of leisure. <laughs> I have to have ice in my drink. <laughs> right. Exactly right. All right. All right. We got your late show headlines coming up. That, of course, includes Alan Rodgers committing to the New York Jets for multiple years. The latest on Saquon. And no LeBron James coming up right after this on FS1. Welcome back to the Card Show on FS1. Time for your late show headlines and headline number one, Craig. And this is going to make you so happy. Aaron Rodgers on his future in New York. He goes on New York radio talking about his future. And here is the sound right here. Um, you know, the Jets gave up a lot for me. Um, so, you know, to just play one year, I think, would be a disservice. That's right. Now, if that one year turns out to be a magical year, who knows? But <laughs> it's more than that. It's how my body feels. Yeah, but listen, he has said throughout this offseason that mentally he's in a good place, physically he's in a good place. And, of course, uh, he recognizes that the Jets made – both a serious financial commitment to him and gave up future potential players in the trade with Green Bay. But that's music to my ears because we there's the fear, is it one and done no matter what? Are we literally looking at the New York Jets with a one-year window to win? If that's the case, yeah, go get Dalvin Cook. Go get me every guy I can get that gives me a chance to win right now because it's the only year I got. So while it doesn't take any pressure off Robert Sala, Joe Douglas, or even Aaron Rodgers himself, it's just good to hear that I might be looking at a two- or three-year run where I'm relevant. Because here's the reality. The New York Jets still think that guy right there, Zach Wilson, is an NFL quarterback. They believe that in their heart and souls. Meaning the day Aaron Rodgers is done, there's the chance, I know contracts come up and finances and all that, that they're committed to a future with that kid. We've seen what that looks like. I can't see that again. Let me say this. <laughs> so, Zach, why don't he get some tutelage yeah. and watch Aaron Rodgers? He is. And see, right, that's yeah. what he's going to that's do. That's what for he's a doing. Yeah, years. he's like a puppy dog. Okay, but at, like, like you said, the Jets. You want to win right now. Right and, now. And they and again, and, and they Well, right now. they showing you they want to win right now by going out and getting Aaron Rodgers. Correct. Why not, like Plexico said, why not just go and get Dalvin Cook? And let's go for it this well, year. maybe they will. And, uh, let's go get them this year. But that is up to Dalvin Cook, too. But let's right. go and get it this year. Yeah. And then let's worry about Look, here's year. the good That's news. That's what I would uh -huh. do. And we, we don't know Aaron Rodgers because we've he's, he's never been our guy before. We've read all the stories. He's mercurial, whatever that means, right? He doesn't practice with the guys. He's aloof. He's this. He's that. He's been, a, he's been perfect since he got here. Thus I'll far. give him that. Being here in the offseason, getting to know the guys, hanging out with the guys, playing you know, every single practice. Mm -hmm. This is good news. I need, I know this seems silly, Plax, but I could probably accuse you guys of it at certain stages of your career. I want a happy Tim Hardaway playing. I want a happy Plaxico Burris. I want a happy Cody Decker. I need a happy Aaron Rodgers. And right now, I'm getting it. And I recognize what you pointed out, that the first six games are really tough. They are. And I know how the New York media and fan base is. I've lived it for a long time. It could go south quick. Yeah, it can. So <laughs> right now in the moment, ain't nobody talking me off that ledge. Hey, after I'm, the, I'm after right the there. the first month of the season, they'll probably be one and three. And Don't Aaron say Rodgers that. Don't say that. Mushrooms. <laughs> but, but speaking about Zach Wilson, uh, you just said that it's going to be tough for you to look at once Aaron Rodgers leaves. Mm -hmm. Historically, if you look at look at Dan Marino, mm -hmm. you look at John Elway, right. you look at Peyton Manning, and you look at Tom Brady. Okay. We're talking about generational quarterbacks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for Zach Wilson, it's going to be tough shoes for him to fill yes. if he has to become the quarterback of this franchise in the next two or three years. Once, once you, you, you get a chance to see – uh, the value that Aaron Rodgers brings to the team. Yes. 
And is this going to be tough shoes to fill for that young man moving forward? Well, he couldn't fill my shoes at quarterback, let alone fill Aaron Rodgers' wow. shoes at quarterback. Wow. And that's the problem. Let's not focus on the negative. Okay. Let's focus on the positive. <laughs> Which is what? Right now in the moment. We were talking yeah. about Zach Wilson. Yeah, right. Super Zach Wilson. That's what we were talking about, right? You're giving to try to bring me down. You brought him up. I'm trying to make a point. I'm passing a new law on this show. There will be no mention of Zach Wilson again this year. I from signed you too, it. right? From me too. Okay. You got to hold me to that. Right, we we there is a fine jar that will be on this table from now on. Ooh, if anybody mentions that guy's name, what's fine the fair jar. amount of money? Dollar? Dollar. Fine. Dollar. Five. Can, Dollar. I, can I use Good. other names to describe him? No, them? you cannot. Mm. Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback of the Jets for the next two or three years, and you guys can all take your shots and tell me about, oh, it's the Jets and the Jets this and the Jets that and the Jets this and the Jets that or Aaron this or Aaron that. You gonna Here's be the saying it. You're going to be saying Zip it. Zip it, Tim Hardaway. <laughs> You're all afraid of what the Jets might be this year. No, we're not. You're all afraid not of sure. what the Jets might be because you don't want no. people like me being happy. They are afraid of what they might be. What does that mean? Not champion. See? There you go again. There you go again. I'm just you know what? keeping it where's real. The, where's the tip chart? Like, like you always say it. You no, no, no. He, he, he didn't we say the about name. That name. No. He, he didn't, didn't mention the name. name. Right. He didn't mention well, the name. Anyway, you'll be, you'll be here frequently during the NFL season, I hope. So every Monday, I can come in and go. I go like this. I go. <laughs> yeah. So every Sunday they lose, I won't be here. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We can put that into your contract. Yeah. I have no problem. Smart move. Jets win. You're here on Monday. Jets lose. We'll talk to you next week. Wow. Yeah, oh, oh, a couple of days <laughs> later. See that? No, we don't want to see plaques if the Jets lose. Oh, wow. Plaques ain't welcome if the Jets oh, lose. For real? For real. All the time. That's keeping it a buck, Timmy. I don't want to see wow. that if the Jets lose. Oh, my God. He gets a I week like off. It. Every Ooh. time the Jets you lose, he gets a week off. You got, you got a hate in your heart. That being wow. said, listen, it's a great day. It's a great day because right football now. is back. And Aaron Rodgers verbalized his commitment to the New York Jets beyond just this year. You know year. what? And the Jets did give up a lot for Aaron Rodgers. They gave him $60 million a year. Lock that that is guaranteed. a lot. Yeah. That there is you a go. lot. Uh, that's the actual trade, if you don't remember what it was. You got the first-round swap of picks, of course. And then, of course, Bill Belichick tried to screw the Jets by getting an offensive lineman that just wanted to take. Don't think I forgot that because I didn't. Uh, and then the second round picks, et cetera, and say blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't even matter anymore. It's not my money anyway. Give him the $60 million, Go win 14 games, and let's call it a day. And I said, that, that ain't enough. Huh? 14 wins? That ain't enough. That's enough for home field that's advantage. Not, that's not enough for a Super Bowl. You need more wins. That, that gives games. me a first round bye. No, it doesn't. And my first that ever playoff game in that life. That's not guaranteed anything. I'm sorry. You have to be wrong on that, Plax. You know, know I love freezing you. out there, too. Huh? <laughs> freezing. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Y'all will go 14 and 3, and Kansas City will go 15 and 2. Never mm. going to happen. Because mm. Kansas City doesn't take the regular season seriously anymore. Wow. Kansas City's going to lose five or six games this year. Ooh. You'll see. What else you got, Cody? Headline number two, where the field Things are feeling good over by the Jets. The Giants, not so much. Why not? Saquon Barkley oh. having a bad week and now removes anything Giants related from all of his social medias. And he also responds to a tweet calling him out amid the contract dispute. My question for you, Craig, is do you expect Saquon to hold out this year? Uh, I don't. I think you got to play because you got to make the 10 million bucks. You know, it's funny, you know, talking earlier about guys whitewashing their social media accounts, which I think is stupid. Tell me he got his Giants tattoo uh, covered up. And I'll take it seriously, right? The other thing that happened that you just alluded to, some random guy on Twitter said, let me tell you what a leader does. Mm -hmm. A leader, here it is, when Daniel Jones had his fifth year option to climb, he didn't run to a podcast and start crying. He put on his big boy pants, kept his mouth shut, and took the Giants to the playoffs. That's what real leaders do. Well, Saquon's a little sensitive right now. He he's gave him four laugh emojis. Because this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Because That's not Saquon, Because Saquon Barkley didn't, had, didn't, didn't, didn't get his fifth year declined. No, it's not apples to apples. That's true. Right. So it's, it's not totally apples to apples. Totally different Yeah, situation. he also deleted the laughing right. emojis because he didn't want the attention for it. But, yo, he right. got it. I would have kept and him I'm, up there. He just laughed at him. Yeah, yeah but means I would that say you don't know what you're talking about. Stop responding to random clowns on Twitter. Who cares what they say about you? Exactly. You could spend all day responding yeah. to those people. Trust I me. I believe My that. thumbs get tired sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, it's not the same at all. And, by the way, 
Daniel Jones didn't lead the Giants to a playoff win against the Vikings. Saquon Barkley did, mm -hmm. right? Without Saquon Barkley, they ain't in the playoffs. Right. Let's not get that twisted ever. What else you got, Cody? Headline number three. Sting with the uh, motif of social media. James Harden posts a cryptic IG story. Been comfortable for so long, it's time to get uncomfortable. Uh, any chance that he actually stays in Philly, Craig? I mean, it seems like he's going to pull the uh, the old Houston resume out of his pocket yes. and make it impossible for Philadelphia to work something out where he stays there and plays, which is really just a shame because, you know, Philly's really good. Yes. They got a good team. They got a team that can compete and maybe go to an Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in the Joel Embiid era and or maybe beyond that. Let me say this, you, and you got to be careful with the Philly fans, the way their yes. reputation is and how they go after people. You, you know, you could be out and about one night having some dinner and some fans might be, you know, see you and, you know, it might be an altercation, altercation <laughs> going on. For <laughs> real. And they're really? calling the city of brother. Right, they call the city of brother. <laughs> love. So, I mean, you, you have to be careful what you do and what you say with the city of brotherly love because, yeah. you know, they, they take they sports seriously. Like Plus said, you know, the beginning of the game, if the, somebody kicked the football uh, short, they booing the, the, the home team. So, you know, they they very serious about it. And and, I, and, I, and, I, and if, if we talk about social media, if I was James Harden, leave that alone. Yeah. Leave that alone. Let it go. Like, come I in and shape. Uh, or, or that's the come, key. Yeah, come like in and shape. Yeah, be a professional. Right. That's be a all professional. Right. He's uncomfortable and, because he's a little sore, you know, from training and working out. And it's something that he hasn't felt. In, in a, a long time. time. <laughs> so he's uncomfortable right now. Yeah. That, that's what's happening. He's right. finally putting the work in. He's like, what's this? You're right. You're right. You're right. Go ahead. He's lost. Right. On exactly. his question, and I've been asking this question yeah. for a while, why does he want to leave Philly at all? I don't think there's an answer to that question. I think he's just a, a different dude. I don't think he's happy anywhere. He wasn't happy. But he's not going anywhere because nobody is going to give up an elite player for James Harden at this point in his right. career. Or, or number think, one draft. I don't know if you Tim who said earlier this week, you know, the whole Ben Simmons thing looks like it's rearing its head again where mm -hmm. you're gonna have a player that's gonna, you know, play himself or eat himself or not work himself out of the lineup, right? Mm -hmm. And then Philly's gonna have to call him on it. Okay. And it's gonna be a John Wall situation yeah. in Houston. It's gonna be Ben Simmons in Philly before he went to Brooklyn. And here's the reality of it. It's stupid. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, the Denver Nuggets aren't trading for you. You know what I mean? No, no, no. You have a chance with Philly and Tobias and Maxi and Embiid and a good core group of players. You are one of the top three, maybe four teams in the East. Why don't you want to be a part of that? I don't know. That's so, what I'm so, getting. So, let me ask you this question. If you Joel Embiid and you know that James Harden does not want to be a part of this basketball team and there's no takers, any teams that would trade for him, and when he walks into training camp, how do you feel knowing that he don't want to be there? You know, that's a great question. I, I will feel uh, it, it'd be tough for me to really, you know, be on his side yeah. because um, we build something here. And if you just come in here and just be in shape and play the way we need for you to play, we could do something great here. And, you know, and I think Joy Embiid, the way he took it with Ben Simmons, he, I think he's going to take the same approach with James Harden and be like, yo, man, you know, that, that's kind of wrong what you're doing. You know, you, 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 you messing up not only we're not talking about the organization. We're talking about your teammates, no. your teammates. You messing up something, the chemistry on that team when you come in that locker room. And, 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 I, and I hear James Harden. He's going to come in. He's, he don't care. No. He's going to look at you like, so what? Right. What, what are you going to do? You know, if you want to fight, we can fight. Whatever, whatever it is, that's the way he is. But I, I, he has to be professional. The NBA has been overly good to James Harden no by doubt. giving yeah. him all this money, and they did exactly what they what you asked them to do when you wanted to get traded. That's right. All right. So at some multiple point, times. multiple yeah. times, at some point, it's going to stop. And it stops right now. And you think he would have learned that by the he, fact that no team made him a significant offer, right. which is why he opted into the one-year deal. But, but he, he is coming to reality now. But before, he thought he'd get it because he's been getting away with it. Yeah. But now it's a reality. Because there's nobody left. There's nobody left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's sitting on 36 million bucks uh, this year to play basketball. And that might be it. Really and that team. might be yeah. it for him. And the only difference between him and Simmons is that the Simmons and Bede problems were on the court. 
Right now, there's no on the court problems with Harden and Embiid. It's all off the court stuff. So that that can be fixed quickly if he comes in in shape and committed to playing high level basketball. Now, if he don't come in in shape, then you got a problem. It's going to be a serious Absolutely problem. Absolutely right. You got one more there, Carl? No, that is it for our late show headlines. I'm being told we have one more story headline wise. It's Lamar Jackson. Give me a uh, video of Lamar Jackson walking in slow motion, looking like a guy that just got two hundred million dollars guaranteed by the Baltimore Ravens. Because that video makes me happy. Because the Baltimore Ravens, for me, if you're if you're ranking AFC teams and you've got the Jets Ooh, one and you got Kansas City two, <laughs> you got Baltimore three right there. And that guy is happy. Let me, let me ask y'all a question. So so he gets that 195, 185 right. guarantee. Uh -huh. Does he get that right away? I think it, it may be prorated based over maybe the first two or three years, but it's guaranteed. I mean, but I mean, but. That, no, he doesn't that, get no. it up front. Yeah, they don't no. just stroke him a check for like okay. five but, but 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 the bone does he get a bonus on side? We can look it up during yeah. the break. I think his base okay. salary this year is like seven million. It'll be a he got a signing bonus, bonus. Okay. and then yeah. maybe a roster bonus. But you could you can live off one eighty five, right? No question. You can you can live. I just want to make sure. I think that'd be yeah, real easy. Taxes are high, so I'm just wondering. Yeah. If <laughs> gasoline is expensive in yeah. Baltimore, <laughs> you can live off. I think you, you can live off one hundred eighty five. He needs to learn about more than gasoline in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, listen, we got more show coming your way, and that is uh, Lamar Jackson, of course, uh, happy and uh, showing up a few days early, and we got much more coming up on Aaron Rodgers being a lifelong Jet from this point on, right after this on FS1. <laughs> yeah, that one's going to stick for a little uh, while. It's, got, been, it's been an eventful week. No doubt. <laughs> of course, right there is Plaxico Bonus. we got Tim Hardaway and Cody Decker. Uh, and just real quick, i got to show it to you one more time. If you are just tuning in, in Atlanta, they have a, uh, a guy who runs really fast, a mascot, known as the Freeze, mm -hmm. and they bring a random uh, fan out of the stands. If you can beat the Freeze in a 100-yard dash, giving the Freeze a 50-yard, you get a 50-yard head start, you win a prize. Mm -hmm. Well, this kid damn near beat the Freeze until he didn't. He Danny Jones did right at the end. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Bang. He brought it on himself. And Look. you got to figure, he's four, and he's like, just oh. bounce across the finish line, oh. Billy. Hey, Full horizontal. Oh. I got to admit, man, I would never lose a, a running race to a man in an adult onesie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just, uh, he's in a full-on leotard. <laughs> he's not going to catch him, and then all of a sudden he is. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Woo! And one more time, slow motion from the side. I'm gonna win. No, I'm not. I said it in the movie, right? Like, oh, air oh. time. Yeah. <laughs> Full on horizontal. Yeah, that's that's what you wow. get there. All right. So uh, that was down in Atlanta. Justin Fields, Chicago Bears quarterback, uh, who's got a bit of a crossroads after his first two years in the league, because statistically has not been very good throwing the rock. Right. Major, major upheaval there, of course, mm -hmm. in Chicago, bringing in a lot of new players. But he was asked directly by a reporter, hey, listen, no Chicago Bear quarterback has ever thrown for more than 4,000 yards. How about you? And Justin Fields said, I plan on doing it this, this year. year. Oh. Here's the, uh, the back and forth. Go ahead, guys. The Bears have been around for 100 years. They've never had a quarterback to throw for 4,000 yards. Yeah. We believe you're going to be in Chicago for a long, long time. Will you break that record? I will. Ah, I plan on doing it this year, too. Woo! I plan on doing it this year. Yeah, a lot of editing, I think, in that video. <laughs> but uh, he's going to be the quarterback for a long time. Maybe he's Why not. Why you ahead? He don't like you, it. You, he's you, you, you think... You think that brotherly love is going to get on somebody? <laughs> <laughs> For him to God, say that, man. Chicago fans, yeah, ooh, they gonna boo him. You for four thousand yards? Come on, man. I will say oh, this though man. about Justin Fields. So yes, his, has been better with his legs than his arm, but I don't think that's his fault. It's they not, had a bad man. offensive line Horrible. and no wide receivers. Let's be honest about it. Terrible. Even when they got Claypool, it didn't do much. That being said. He did what you want a quarterback to do. He got better. Way better. By 300 yards. Not a significant amount better, but he had 17 touchdown passes to seven. His stats got better. He did. did he make the huge leap? No. But there are times when you got to also, as we just said, look at the dudes around him. He was put in a spot 
where he's running for his life. Yeah. Like, what do you want the guy to do? Stand in the pocket now, and now, just get now, beat now, down every game? Now, do Patrick Mahomes make his team better? Yes, he does. Okay. Yes. He's, come on, I mean, come on. That, that, Patrick that's Mahomes. Unfair. That's, that is unfair. <laughs> if you're going to f- throw 4,000 yards, I mean, you better make your had, team better. Had, yeah. that, that, hey, buddy. He hey. was a rookie. Hey, man. You better, uh, he did go from I seven had, touchdowns had, to 17 touchdowns. Yeah. That's it, a definite. Let me just say this real quick. Running. He had more touchdown passes than Daniel Jones did last year. Yes, he okay. There you go. Okay. And, and Daniel Jones made the playoffs. And won a playoff game. And, and, won and the there. offensive line in Chicago is worse than the one over here. Right. Yeah. In, mm-hmm. in the Anyhow, the that's that's the most he is a fan of anything is oh. when he talks Chicago Bear football. <laughs> Before we get out of here for the weekend, we always like to end the show about something we like to call like it or a spike it. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a Little League baseball player. He has a bat flip for the ages. Do you like it or do you spike it? There it is. There it is. There you go. I like it. Halfway down to first base before the bat gets tossed in the air. Like it or spike it? I like it. Like it. Spike it. What? Come on, man. This is Little League. Oh, oh they did. Oh, you know what? Kids they play it. Little League. And all league. sports do the same Let thing. The Football, play. baseball, hey, soccer, and it. baseball. I'm teaching them discipline. That no, is no, no, they, no, no, no. Stop. Flip it twice. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Hey, come on. Saying. They learned it by watching you, Dad. Right, (laughs) right, right. They learned by watching you. Have yourselves a great weekend. We'll see you Monday morning at 930 right here on FS1. Peace out.